can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1641, Wolf Warrior 2 premieres. First half, on the first. In China. The news of Commando 2's strong premiere made it into the country. On Weibo, the netizens were feeling a swirl of emotions. Wilson's new movie is selling well? They've earned 4 million US dollars in just two hours? How did they do so well in the box office? Damn. Is the Commando franchise on steroids? God damn it. I was hoping it would heck up. It looks like Wilson and Hollywood have won the bragging rights again this time. Yeah, I really can't stand that look on Wilson's face. It's so annoying. Hi, this is terrible news. John Yee's new movie is in danger. Whatever, I'll just buy a ticket. Mother hecker, support domestic movies. Ha ha, I booked the tickets half a month ago. Whatever it is, we definitely have to watch John Yee's new movie. I'm already waiting at the theater entrance. It looks like there's quite the crowd. Looking forward to John Yee's new work. I'm also waiting to see John Yee's crossover into the film industry and what kind of movie he can bring us. This is his first time making a movie. Beijing. At the premiere of Wolf Warrior 2. John Yee and the main cast and crew were in attendance. There was also a grand lineup of special guests who graced the event that was unlike any other past movie premiere. Other than the media. Other than the staff. John Yee had nearly invited half of the entertainment circle. Ning Lan. Hua Dongfang. Xu Han. Chen Guang and his wife. Grandma Zhong Xia. Li Ku and seven or eight other big name directors. His eldest younger sister, Cao Dan, as well as many of her internet celebrity friends. His parents, his parents in law, his relatives, and close friends. The entire theater was full. By rights, a movie premiere should have set aside some tickets aside for public moviegoers, but Zhang Yi really couldn't do so this time. On the stage, Zhang Yi was holding a microphone and saying with a smile, Thank you, everyone, for coming to attend the premiere of Wolf Warrior 2. I'm really grateful. Actually, the organizers asked me to get an MC for the event today as per standard practice. He then turned to look at Dong Shanshan, who was standing next to him. But when I thought about it, Shan Shan and I are both professional hosts anyway, so surely there wasn't a need to get someone else, right? We might as well do it ourselves. Dong Shan Shan added with a laugh, the crucial thing is that we can save money this way. Yep, that's right, Zhong Yi said. The people in the audience were tickled. After that, it was time for the media reporter's question and answer session. A central TV reporter asked, Director Zhong, do you have any expectations for your new movie's box office performance? Zhong Yi smiled and said, of course I do. The central TV reporter asked, how much? Zhong Yi gave it some thought. I'll be glad if it breaks even, ha ha. A newspaper reporter asked, this is your and your team's first time making a movie. Strictly speaking, you and the team are not really professionals, right? Zhong Yi nodded and said, but we've got courage. Another reporter stood up with a smile. Why wasn't there an advanced screening this time? Zhong Yi answered, I was thinking that if we want to watch it, everyone should watch it together, so I decided to go with screening it all at the same time. It's not my style to do it any other way. A dozen odd questions were thrown out. Then it was almost time for the movie to start playing. Zhong Yi led the team off stage and sat in the first row. Ha Chichi was very nervous and her hands were trembling. Beside her, Sophia kept taking deep breaths. Zhong Yi smiled and comforted, it'll be fine. Ha Chichi gave a wry smile. I'm really worried about the box office earnings. Zhong Yi smiled and said, we're at this point, so let's just leave it to the market to decide. Actually, not even Ha Chichi, Sophia, Yao Jintsai, and the others knew how the movie turned out after it had been edited. This was because everything was handled by Zhong Yi alone. They didn't even see the final version of the movie, and no one knew what it was like, so how could they not be nervous? It was finally time. Their production was finally going to be assessed by the market. The atmosphere in the theater had become a little bit tense. At the seats of several of the few big-name directors. 
Old Lee, how many theaters is the movie released in? I heard they're showing in 33.7% of the total domestic theaters. That high? Yeah, they're really giving him face. But the foreign screening rate is not even 0.01%. Near where Zhong Yi's family was seated. His three younger sisters were busy chattering. It's starting soon. Come on, bro. You can do it. Our bro has never failed before. At the celebrity seating area. Sister Ning, do you feel optimistic about this movie? Who knows? Is Zhong Yi really intent on challenging Hollywood? I guess. But how is he going to do that? God knows. The lights dimmed in the theater. The big screen lit up and the movie began. The theater fell silent. Everyone picked up their 3D glasses and put them on. Some of the people here were not too used to wearing 3D glasses. This was because, in the context of the Chinese market, even though 3D movies were no longer considered to be using some sort of complex technology, there weren't too many Chinese directors who were willing to film in 3D. The VFX could not catch up to 3D technology, and the costs were just too high. In addition, there were no Chinese 3D movies that had performed very well at the box office either. For example, his parents and his parents-in-law. Some of these people were even coming to the theater to watch a 3D movie for the first time, and they all found this to be quite a novelty. The music started playing. In the vast ocean, two speedboats were attacking. Attention, pirates alongside. Attention, pirates alongside. Take cover. All crew below deck. I repeat, pirates alongside. Initiate emergency procedures. The cargo ship was halted. The pirates surrounded it. Gunfire rang out in staccato bursts. At this moment, John Yi's figure appeared on the deck of the cargo ship as a piece of passionate music played. He opened his arms wide and dived into the ocean. Ah. Wow. Ayo. Everyone in the theater began shouting. This scene immediately left an impact on everyone. But this was only the beginning. When Yen Zhong Yi started the intense hand to hand combat with the pirates in the ocean, everyone in the theater gasped. Li Ka was startled. Beside him, several of the Chinese big name directors were also so shocked that their 3D glasses nearly fell off. What the heck? A long take. It was Hollywood's long take technique. Zhong Yi, have you gone crazy? You actually resorted to doing a long take in the ocean? A layman might not know about the danger of this, but how could Li Ku and the other directors not know? The fight scene was very intense. Everyone was on the edge of their seats. One. Three. Five. Zhong Yi bound the pirates together. When Zhong Yi climbed onto the speedboat, he picked up a sniper rifle belonging to the pirates and took aim. Then he fired it. There was a loud bang, and the bullet came flying towards the screen. The entire theater screamed. Ah. Ah. The bullet looked like it was headed straight for them. This was the effect of a 3D movie. It was just too realistic. Many of those who hadn't watched a 3D movie before were petrified. Clearly, Zhong Yi had deliberately created this scene. This was done through a combination of film and VFX techniques to bring out the 3D effect. It was a badass move that was done to make the bullet look as though it were flying out of the screen and into the audience to excite their visual sense. It was really badass. And the effect it had was extremely obvious. At this moment, the movie's title slammed into view, Wolf. Warrior. 2. Ning Lan took a deep breath. Heck. Xu Han said stunned, this. Yao Jintsai was nearly left kneeling. Awesome. Jack said with wide eyes, this wasn't there when we were filming the scene. Ha Chichi said dumbfoundedly, was this filmed by us? His eldest younger sister, Cao Dan, had her jaw drop. Heavens. The group of internet celebrities were also shocked. Our domestic movies can actually achieve such a level of special effects. Zhongs were looked at John Yi. Was this made with imported techniques? John Yi couldn't help but chuckle. He said, What do you mean by imported techniques? It was created by our very own domestic VFX firm. 
don't always think that something imported is gonna be good, China isn't that backward. Everyone found this a little unbelievable. The short opening to the movie turned out to be shockingly beautiful. At this moment, a question surfaced in the minds of a lot of people, is this really something that a hecking non-professional film crew could film? Keys. Are you hecking kidding me? This is clearly at the hecking level of a Hollywood production. A team that had previously worked on variety shows. A director who had never made a movie before. A combination like that can actually produce a domestic movie like this. Chapter 1642, Wolf Warrior 2 premieres. Second half, the movie was still showing. With just the opening, everyone's attention was caught. The theater fell silent. There wasn't any more whispering. Everyone just stared at the screen with wide eyes, wanting to see how the plot would develop. They wanted to know about Long Feng's story and what would happen next. On the silver screen, the movie flashed back. A real estate company's demolition team was demolishing residential houses. Zhong Yi escorted the remains of his comrade back home. Zhong Yi got into a fight. He got additionally discharged from the military. Went to jail. The most elite special ops team known as the Wolf Warriors was revealed as a result. The movie cut away. Africa. Yao Jiansai made his appearance. Look, we're both Chinese. You do this to your own people? Hey, ever since 3 p.m. on the 14th of last month, I haven't been a Chinese citizen. A gunfight started and chaos erupted. The intense shootout on the African streets and in the supermarket made everyone tremble in anxiety. What do we do now? The Chinese embassy. Let's go to the embassy. They'll take us in. We're Chinese. What about us? Will they accept us too? Hard to say, that's our country. In the theater, peals of laughter could be heard. Chinese? You're back to being Chinese now? On the coast. The Chinese fleet was preparing for emergency evacuation operations. 47 Chinese workers are still stuck at the Hanbon Chinese factory. What's worse, Dr. Chen is stuck 55 kilometers behind enemy lines on a medical relief mission. He's a high-value target for the rebel army. Everything is in total lockdown from Lochino to St. Francis. Without the UN's authorization, our troops aren't allowed to enter the war zone. This operation is highly important. We have to evacuate those Chinese workers and Dr. Chen by all means. Under the current circumstances, combat troops are prohibited from entering the war zone. Someone has to undertake the mission alone. I'll go. Stop right there. What are you doing? Former People's Liberation Army, Southeast Military Region, Special Operations Forces, Wolf Warriors, Long Feng, reporting for duty. On the savannah. In the jeep. Stop the car. Stop it. Stop the car, I want to get out. The car stopped. Sophia opened the door and got out of the car. But before she could even take a few steps, she stopped in her tracks. On the silver screen, several lions were gnawing on the carcass of a zebra. Sophia coolly brushed her hair back and shrugged before turning around, calmly. She slowly walked back to the car and closed the door after getting in. Your marines are here to pick you up. Everyone in the audience doubled over in laughter. Ha 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 ha. At an African factory. It was time for Boss Chien Jr.'s appearance. Seen one of these? Ever shot one of these before? This wolf here, I killed it myself with this rifle. This is a real man's toy. Don't be afraid. From now on, your safety will be my responsibility. The mercenaries attacked the factory. Ah. Help me. They got my leg. You're hecking fine. Everyone in the theater was laughing. But as they watched, they saw Boss Chien Jr.'s character transform from a boy into a man. When his character viciously shot dead the mercenary built like a bull, the one-liner he delivered excited the audience. Didn't your mama tell you not to play with the weep, bang? Didn't your mama tell you not to heck with spoiled brats? The moviegoers were so astonished that they let out a loud, wow. On the warship. Sir, we've triangulated the cell phone signal. Sir, targets, locked on. 
Sir, we've received orders from high command, fire. Xu Han's eyes turned red. Ning Lan was on the edge of her seat. Many of the moviegoers started tearing up. The war zone is up ahead. We can't get through. All the guns were aimed at them. All the tanks were aimed at them. Where's the flag? Here. Drive. When Zhong Yi hung the five-starred red flag on his arm, when the vehicles drove safely through the battlefield, the entire theater fell silent. It's the Chinese. Hold your fire. Hold your fire. It's the Chinese. The flag. It was the Chinese flag. Li Ke clenched his fists. Emotion surged through Zhong Yi's parents. Many of the celebrities were holding back tears. Pride. Fervor. They could feel the different emotions flooding in. At the end of the movie was a Chinese passport. Everyone in the audience was startled to see it. A passport? What did this mean? At this moment, several lines of text appeared on the back of the passport. Looking at the words, the audience was unable to get a hold of themselves. It was like a dam had burst. To the citizens of the People's Republic of China, when you encounter danger overseas, do not give up. Remember this, there is a powerful homeland backing you. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. Silence reigned in the theater. Suddenly, the ending theme played. When the credits scrolled down the silver screen, the theater blew up. Zhong Yi's mother jumped to her feet. Bravo! His father was also very excited. Li Ke stood up and applauded. The directors around him were also clapping in amazement. Ning Lan was cheering. Zhang Xia gave a thumbs up. Xu Han nearly jumped to her feet. Everyone in the theater was on their feet. There was round after round of applause. Half a minute. One minute. The applause didn't stop. Ha Chichi shouted, that was great. Great. Sophia cried. Little Wang cried. Jack and a few of the American actors were still staring at the screen in disbelief. Yao Jinsai, Dong Shanshan, and the rest of the film's actors looked at one another in astonishment. Inside the theater, every one of the industry insiders and celebrities had been stunned. Even the actors who starred in Wolf Warrior 2 were stunned. They didn't dare believe what kind of Chinese movie they had watched today. Although they did not say anything specifically and were all congratulating and saying good things when they saw Zhong Yi earlier. It would be a lie to say that they did not have any doubts at heart. A layman, a pure layman who didn't hail from the film industry had suddenly come to make a movie. Who wouldn't have misgivings about that? Many people were afraid that Zhong Yi's new movie would turn out to be neither fish nor fowl. They were afraid that he would shoot the movie based on his experience in making variety shows or television series and end up making a joke out of it. But now, they realized they were mistaken. Zhong Yi was indeed Zhong Yi. He was indeed still that hecking, king of crossovers. Filming. Casting. Acting. Visuals. 3D VFX. Plot. Pacing. From the start until the end, there was nothing to nitpick. It was seamless inside and out. He really could do it. He really knew how. He really knew. So this is Zhong Yi's new movie? This is Wolf Warrior 2. A movie without any male idols, yet it was an enjoyable watch. Without a Hollywood team, this kind of 3D could be achieved? Our domestic movies can even be made to such a standard? Be it the media reporters, the directors from the industry, or the many celebrities who had graced the premiere of Wolf Warrior 2. All of them were left with a very deep impression of the movie. Chapter 1643, On Fire. The movie ended. The premiere was supposed to be over. But there was an extremely excited atmosphere in the theater at the moment, and no one was leaving. Many of the Chinese reporters immediately rushed out of their seats and surrounded the main cast of Wolf Warrior 2. The female lead, Sophia. The spoiled brat, Boss Chien Jr the main antagonist, Jack. They spared none of them. Ms. Sophia. 
Please accept our interview. Mr. Jack, how did Zhong Yi manage to convince you to join the production? Boss Qian Jr., why did you decide to join the cast of this movie? Teacher Yao, I really liked your role in the movie. Teacher Shan Shan, you didn't have too many scenes in this movie, but it's obvious that you should be the female lead of the first movie. Has director Zhong said anything about when he will shoot Wolf Warrior 1? Groups and groups of reporters surrounded them. Many of the actors were scrambling to cope with the media personnel. There was a shimmering light in the eyes of the reporters as they descended into a frenzy. Over there, Zhong Yi was swarmed by his relatives and friends. Ha Chichi and Zhongs were both hugged Zhong Yi. Director Zhong, you're amazing. Ning Lan walked over. Zhong Er, you're so impressive. I feel the same. Xu Han sighed and said, you really managed to make the movie. Chen Guang was yelling as he ran up, damn, how did you do it? Fan Wenli gave him a thumbs up. Watching you in your first movie, your acting was quite good. Zhang Xia said, whatever movies that get released at the same time as you are in for a bad time. His parents. His parents-in-law his cousins. Everyone came over excitedly to congratulate him. At the back, after several of the big-name directors in China had gotten over their shock, they fell silent all at once. Then they looked at each other before finally shifting their gazes to one person. They stared at him in a particular kind of way. They were looking at Zhu Zhao. An elite Chinese film director. Zhu Zhao said in a speechless manner, why are you all looking at me? Li Ku asked, old Zhu, isn't your new movie opening next week? Several of the directors next to him nodded. Yes. Next week. His movie will be released next week. Zhu Jiao was speechless. He didn't say anything. He just turned around and picked up his cell phone to make a call. Hello, old Chen, go and contact the theater chains and amend the proposal to the SARFT. We're not going to show our movie next week, if I say we aren't, then we aren't. Why do you care? Just hurry up and get it done as I said. Push the release back by another two weeks. Lika was dumbfounded. The other directors were also dumbfounded. After hanging up, Zhu Zhao looked at them and said, it's not going to be next week anymore. After holding it back for a long time, Li Ku finally said, shameless. The other directors around him looked at him in contempt. That's how you react. But Zhu Zhao spread his hands. There's nothing else to do. You need to know when to cut your losses. They were all elite directors in China, especially Zhu Zhao, who was one of the most senior figures in the directing world. But after watching Wolf Warrior 2, Zhu Zhao did not even hesitate and immediately postponed the premiere of his new movie. This showed just how great of a competitor he thought Wolf Warrior 2 would be. A female director asked, what kind of box office earnings do you guys think he'll achieve? Another director sighed and said, let's see if the regular folks will buy tickets. Li Ku turned his gaze to the outside of the theater and said, the first showing at the other theaters should be over as well, right? I wonder how many people have gotten shocked by this new movie of John Yi's. Meanwhile. Shanghai. At a theater. The moviegoers were still staring dumbfoundedly at the big screen. Oh my god. This is a domestic movie? Can it not be so impressive? Is that John Yi fellow on steroids or something? W was this movie really hecking made by him? Someone else must be behind it. The hecking must be someone else who directed the movie. Th this doesn't make any sense. Beijing. At the entrance of a theater. Old Li, why are you crying? Mother hecker, you're asking me? Aren't you crying yourself? Hi, it was such an exciting watch, I couldn't hold back my tears. When the command to fire was given, that must have left so many people in tears. No good, I must come back tomorrow. I also want to watch it again. I'm gonna bring my family this time. This is the best domestic movie I've watched this year, no, it's the best domestic movie I've ever watched. Shenzhen. Outside a theater. A group of teenagers were screaming as they came out. Ah. I haven't had enough, I really haven't had enough. Oh, my amazing face smacking Jong. You're truly my idol. This movie impressed the shit out of me. It was just that fantastic. 
I love Boss Chien Jr. My hubby can act so well. He can actually act. Get lost, that's my husband you're talking about. Guangzhou. At a theater. Zhong Yi has done it again. That fellow is so amazing. I like the scenes with Yao Jintsai. They were really funny. Old Yao and Zhong Yi are truly the best hecking duo in the industry. Ha ha ha, Sophia's scene in the savannah was hilarious. The lion chasing after the car was so thrilling. The 3D effects were spot on. No other domestic movie has ever been made with such quality shots and CGI. How can it be so fun to watch? The movie was shot well, and the cast was chosen well. It was perfect. Nanjing. At the People's Square. The tickets were so worth it. That tank battle gave me goosebumps. Mother hecker, I want to watch it another time. When Zhong Yi raised the Chinese flag, I actually cried. Yeah, it was so touching. And that image of the passport at the end. It really makes your blood race. Our homeland is so powerful. Yeah, I've never felt such a sense of pride being Chinese as I do right now. Tianjin. It was crazy good. This won't do, I have to quickly recommend this movie to my co-workers. Yeah, if they don't watch this movie, they're going to regret it for the rest of their lives. The best quote from the movie has to be, whoever offends the mighty nation of China, however distant, shall be destroyed. These were the exact words that Zhong Yi declared back when he was an unknown hacker. That's right. I always get pumped when I hear it. When I learned that Commando 2 wouldn't be showing in China, I felt so bad about it for several days. I quite like that series and have always liked director Wilson's movies. But after watching Wolf Warrior 2, the only thing I wish to say now is, heck you, Wilson. Heck you in your Commando movie. On Weibo. The majority of the people had not watched the movie yet. Has the premiere ended? Has anyone watched Wolf Warrior 2? How was it? If it isn't good, I won't be watching it. I just came out of the theaters. Go and watch it. Mother Hecker, it has to be the best movie of the year. Strongly recommending it. Recommending everyone watch Wolf Warrior 2 with everything I've got. It was crazy good. I still haven't calmed down. I have a feeling that John Yi's new movie might break the domestic box office earnings record. What? Was it that good? What's the movie about, exactly? Okay, I bought tickets as well. Your review is making me want to watch it. If it isn't good, feel free to come and beat me up. Chapter 1644, The Premier's Box Office Earnings. On this day. One person. One movie. That was all it took to turn the entire country upside down. The real-time statistics of movies box office earnings in China, number one, A Cause to Kill 3, Hollywood Action Movie, CNUR 21.07 million number two, Cosmic Crisis, Hollywood Sci-Fi, CNUR 19.8 million number three, My World, Chinese Published, CNUR 11.51 million, number 10, Wolf Warrior 2, Earnings Pending. These were the 10 films currently being shown in China. The first and second place movies of the day were both Hollywood films that had just been released. Although they were already past the peak of their box office period, these two top Hollywood films were still making tens of millions of yuan at the box office each day. Compared to that, the Chinese movies were performing much weaker relatively both abroad and at home. My World, ranked third, was already one of the highest grossing movies of the year, and its box office gross thus far stood at 520 million renminbi. As for Wolf Warrior 2, its statistics had yet to register on the rankings. This was because today was Wolf Warrior 2's first day of release. Due to the underdeveloped real-time tracking technology of ticket sales, many cinema chains and movie theaters could not upload their figures to the database in time. This resulted in Wolf Warrior 2 not appearing on the real-time box office rankings. Nobody knew when it would appear on the real-time leaderboards. Noon. At John Yi Studio. After the premiere, Zhong Yi brought his team back to the office. Why haven't they refreshed the rankings? Just how much have we earned at the box office so far? I'm so anxious that I could die. Hocus pocus, may the heavens bless us. Ha Chichi kept refreshing the rankings every once in a while. 
Jones were clasped his hands in prayer. The premiere had ended, so it was all about the box office earnings now. The studio staff all knew exactly how important the premiere's box office result was. It could even be said that it would affect the survival of a movie. If the box office earnings were good, there would be an increase in the showtimes of the movie at the various movie theater chains. With a reputation and good word of mouth, the public's enthusiasm would definitely rise and that in turn would increase the box office earnings. If that happened, the battle would have been half won. But if the box office earnings were poor? The theater chains would surely lower the shown rate of the movie, and that would spell the end for Wolf Warrior 2. No matter how good the word of mouth the movie had earned, it would be difficult to revive it. This was how important the opening day box office earnings of a movie was. Commando 2's global box office earnings had already almost assured that they would have a good performance in the theaters. As for them? Everything was still an unknown right now. Little John was getting restless. Director Jong, how much do you think we can bring in? Jong Yi was amused. Ever since we left the theater, you've asked that me 800 times. But I'm worried. Little Wang had her head in her hands as she cried out, shooting this movie was such torture. Before we started production, we were worried about whether there was enough money. After the scenes were shot, we were worried that we didn't film it good enough. When the production was finally completed, we got worried about the premiere. And now that the premiere has ended, we're starting to worry about the box office earnings. To think I used to wonder why those domestic movie directors were always unshaven. So it was because they always had such intense stress. Tong Fu felt like he had met a confidant. That's right, I seriously agree. Zhong Yi laughed and said, don't worry, because worrying won't affect anything anyway. Wu Yi also said anxiously, Director Zhong, why don't you say something reassuring? Little Ju nodded repeatedly. Yeah, give us something to fall back on, give us a prediction. Ha Chichi and Zhong Zhuo were both looking at Zhong Yi eagerly. Zhong Yi thought for a bit. A prediction? Maybe around 30 million? Little Wang said, wow, 30 million isn't too bad. Tong Fu nodded in agreement. Yeah, I'll be satisfied with 30 million. Ha Chichi did some calculations on her fingers and then said, if the premiere can bring in 30 million yuan, the final box office earnings could reach 300 million, or even 400 million yuan. That's already very good for a domestic movie. You're still a new director, so that would be a very good result and a dazzling achievement. Zhong Yi was taken aback. Yuan? What Yuan? He replied, I was talking about US dollars. Ha Chichi said, ah? Zhongzhua laughed, ha ha. Tong Fu chuckled, pfft. Little Wang said, Director Zhong, you sure are funny. Zhong Yi sighed. Look at how inexperienced you are. Everyone in the studio laughed at that, and their nervousness also dissipated a little because of it. No one took Zhong Yi's words seriously. At the studio of a director. Director Sun, Wolf Warrior 2 seems to be quite good. Director Lee and the others have given rave reviews of it. Furthermore, it seems like director Ju Zhao has delayed the release of his new movie after attending the premiere of Wolf Warrior 2. Should we also be cautious? Are we going to change our date too? The box office earnings aren't out yet. Let's wait a while. Right, it would make us look really bad if we change the date now. Our movie is also very good. Let's see what Wolf Warrior 2's opening day box office earnings are first. At Male Idol Song Chi Studio. Wolf Warrior 2 has premiered? Yeah, it's showing in theaters. HMPH, the box office earnings shouldn't be great, right? It's still unknown, but the reviews online seem to suggest it's pretty good. What uses word of mouth anyway? The box office earnings still have the final say on the performance. Without any male idols, how can he earn any money at the box office? Zhong Yi is too short-sighted. That's right. If he had agreed to double our Song Chi's pay back then, his movie's box office performance would surely not be bad, ha ha. But since he couldn't bear to part with the money, there's no one he can blame for this. He can blame himself. This is what short-sightedness is. Zhong Yi is too arrogant. He always thinks that there's nothing he can't do. Japan. 
Commando 2 is pretty good. Yeah, I watched the premiere as well. A, Zhong Yi's movie hasn't been released yet? I think it has already. How are the box office earnings? They're not out yet. Haha, <laughs> I can't wait to see Zhong Yi make a fool of himself. India. Commando 2 was so awesome. What about that Wolf Warrior 2? Who knows? Wasn't that Chinese person thinking of taking on Hollywood? Like he could challenge them. It's more appropriate to say that he's gonna get beaten up, no? Ha ha ha. America. The day's almost over. The box office earnings should come out soon. No movie can challenge on Commando 2. How's that movie the Chinese guy made? The box office sales must be terrible. The Chinese only know how to talk big. China. Hurry up and tabulate the statistics. What the heck are the theaters doing? I can't wait anymore. Where are the box office earnings for Wolf Warrior 2? It's almost the cutoff time, right? Don't get so anxious. Wait a while more. We'll see how face smacking Jong did very soon. I think everyone should calm down. We shouldn't be thinking about challenging Hollywood anyway. It's enough to compete within our own market. For Zhong Yi to make such a good domestic movie, it's an unprecedented achievement. That's right. In any case, I've already contributed by purchasing a movie ticket. I've contributed my share too. Half an hour. An hour. It was time. Finally, the global premiere box office earnings for Commando 2 came out. At Wilson's company. Someone came running in. It's closed. Wilson and the others asked, what's the final figure? That person was beaming. We got $19 million in the box office for the North American region. Together with the other countries for the global box office earnings, the premiere brought in a total of $36 million US dollars. Wilson felt very reassured when he heard that. Nice. Great. Everyone around him started cheering. That's awesome. I knew it. It was just as we predicted. No, it's much higher than we expected. Congratulations, director. An opening day box office earnings of 36 million US dollars. Even in the history of Hollywood, this would count as one of the highest grossing box office releases. Not many Hollywood movies could bring in an amount like 36 million US dollars at the box office on their first day. 36 million US dollars was equivalent to over 200 million renminbi. Looking at the global movie market as a whole, many of the better local movies that did quite well, and were better performers could not beat Commando to's one-day box office earnings with their gross box office earnings. This was the reputation of Wilson's brand, as well as the reputation of Hollywood. No one in the world could match it. Suddenly, Wilson thought of something and said with a laugh, what about that Chinese guy's movie? That person laughed mockingly and said, the final figures should be calculated soon, I guess. Chapter 1645, Wolf Warrior 2 tops the box office. In China. Deep into the night. It was already past midnight, but a lot of people could not fall asleep, especially those who had caught the premiere of Wolf Warrior 2. Even though none of them really believed that Zhong Yi could seriously mount a challenge on Hollywood as that would be considered quite a fantasy. This because they all knew in their hearts just how big the Chinese box office was. All they wanted to know was how much the domestic box office earnings for Wolf Warrior 2 would get on its first day of release. On Weibo. I can't sleep. It's the end of the first day. Just how much did it earn in the box office? Commando 2's results came out first? Over 36 million US dollars? What about Wolf Warrior 2? I want to know about Wolf Warrior 2 as well. Countless citizens were looking forward to it. One time. Five times. Ten times. Everyone kept refreshing the box office rankings. In the intense atmosphere of the public's attention, the opening day box office figures for Wolf Warrior 2 were finally released. The public and industry had waited the entire day for this. The results were finally going to be revealed. John Yi's house. His daughter was already asleep. Zhong Yi had his hands behind his back as he paced around the living room on the first floor. 
having reached this point, he was also starting to feel a little nervous. Would it work? Could it really be done? The scale of this world's Chinese theatre chains should be about the same as his previous worlds. There was certainly a basis for the box office earnings here to be similar, but would the movie be accepted? Wu Zixing came downstairs with a cup of coffee. Have some, it'll perk you up. Zhang Yi was taken aback. Aya, why haven't you slept yet? Old Wu smiled. I'm not tired. You don't have to wait with me. Zhang Yi said, go to bed first. Old Wu sat down on the sofa. I'm really not tired. D.I.D.I. Zhang Yi's cell phone rang again. It was the umpteenth time that his mother had sent him a message. Are the box office results out yet? John Yi replied, it'll be out soon. The entire family knew just how important today was for John Yi. This was perhaps the biggest turning point in his career thus far. He had bet their entire family's property on it, his reputation, and his career. John Yi had placed himself on the verge of losing everything for this one movie, all in order to carve out a way forward. He was doing this for himself, as well as for the sake of Chinese movies. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. A call came in. Zhang Yi had raised his cell phone alerts to the highest volume, and they could be heard clearly throughout the first floor of the villa. Here it comes. He immediately picked up his cell phone and answered, How much is it? The voice on the other end of the line trembled as it read out the figure. Zhang Yi hung up and sat down slowly. Wu Zixin gave a slight smile and asked, How is it? She heard Zhang Yi cackle with laughter, ha 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 ha. He continued laughing for half a minute straight. When Wu Zixing saw this, she understood. At a movie theatre chain. Looking at the numbers on the screen, the staff were all dumbfounded. Th this, oh my god. Did they get it wrong? Old Li, calculate it again. Quick. Hurry up. The entire country's box office statistics have already been connected to the network, and it's the same for all the other theatre chains. There can't be any possibility of an error. There's no need to calculate the data again. This is the final box office figure. My god. This is crazy. It's hecking crazy. John Yi has hecking played it real big this time. At a newspaper agency. It's still not out? We've been waiting the entire day. How are we supposed to write the draft like this? Yeah, we have to publish the report by morning. I've already completed my article. Commando 2 tops the glo global box office ranking, Wolf Warrior 2 sells well in China with good earnings, it won't go wrong if we write it like that. Delete that, you've gotten it wrong. What? Wrong? Chief Editor, what do you mean? Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings have been revealed. How much is it? Did it surpass 30 million? It surpassed that figure. Take a seat before I tell you guys. We're already sitting. Aya, yeah, just say it already. Wolf Warrior 2's opening day box office earnings are over 260 million yuan. Huh? How much? At this moment, the entire newspaper agency fell silent. At Yao Jinsai's house. John Yi's call came. When Yao Jinsai put down the phone, he appeared extremely stunned. His wife anxiously asked, How did it do? Yao Mi was even more anxious. So, how was it? How did it do? Yao Jinsai said dumbfoundedly, Zhang Er said that the box office earnings were over 260 million yuan. His wife was shocked. What? Yao Mi exclaimed, what the hell? Dong Shan Shan's house. Zhong Yi called. Say that again? Dong Shan Shan said with wide eyes. Zhong Yi laughed and said, more than 260 million yuan. Dong Shan Shan exclaimed, can you not brag? Zhong Yi said, it's true. Dong Shan Shan didn't believe him. How can it possibly have done so well at the box office? In a hotel. Jack and several of the American actors finally received a call from Zhong Yi. After hearing the figure that Zhong Yi provided him with, Jack dropped his cell phone in shock, and the call was cut off. What did the director say? Heck! 260 million? 
Impossible. This doesn't make any sense. Jesus, we're not dreaming, right? At the house of the richest man in China. Boss Qian Jr. exclaimed, how can it be that high? Upstairs, Qian Haitao and his wife were awoken by the shouting and came downstairs to have a look. Mrs. Qian asked, what is it, son? Qian Haitao frowned. Why aren't you sleeping? Boss Qian Jr. said in a daze, Wolf Warrior 2 earned 260 million in the box office on its first day of release. As the wealthiest man in China, Qian Haitao was obviously a very calm soul. But when he heard this box office figure, his knees nearly gave way. After a moment of silence, he sighed and said, Teacher Zhong is going to tear a hole in the sky. At Song Qi Studio. The entire room of people blanched. Are you serious? It's been published online. How did it turn out like this? 260 million? Song Qi and his agent both looked disgusted and terrible. This box office figure had shocked them so much that they nearly spat out a mouthful of blood. At Zhong Yi Studio. Silence reigned in the office. How much? 260 million. How much? 260 million. Come again? At Li Ku's home. A call from a director friend woke him up. Old Jew, do you know what time it is? Something big has happened. What's the matter? Zhong Yi has started something big. What? Wolf Warrior 2 scored 260 million yuan on its first day at the box office. What did you say? With a bounce, Li Ku sat up in bed in shock. America. At a banquet. It was still daytime here. The entire film crew of Commando 2 was present. The director, the actors, the investors, everyone had gathered together and were celebrating with a party. At this moment, someone came running in. This is not good. Everyone looked over. What's the matter? What's the matter, why are you carrying on? That person said with a panicked expression, the box office earnings of that Chinese guy are out. Wilson laughed and said, so how much did they take in? A fraction of ours? That person wiped his sweat away and said, 40 million. Everyone laughed. 40 million? You mean Yuan, right? That's not too bad a performance. Oh yeah, it's chump change. Ours is 36 million dollars, his is 40 million yuan. With the exchange rate, they're at most a fraction of our box office earnings, ha ha. But the person who came bearing the news had an ashen face. Wilson looked at him. What is it? Is something wrong? That person gulped. In dollars. Wilson was startled. What about dollars? That person said with a bitter smile, Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings were counted in US dollars. The entire venue fell silent. US dollars? 40 million US dollars? Wilson spat out a mouthful of blood. Chapter 1646, Zhong Yi becomes famous with a single battle. In the film industry. This is not good. That hooligan from China is at it again. What's happening? Didn't Commando 2 get crowned as the champion of the global box office earnings yesterday? Huh? Wolf Warrior 2 took its place. Hi, I said that when Wilson used Zhong Yi to hype up his movie, it was best not to provoke that fellow since he's not someone that you can push around so easily. Look at what has happened now. The UK. Online. My God. How did it turn out like this? Yeah, how could this happen? Is the film industry going to see a change soon? Just who the hell is that Chinese Nobel Prize recipient, really? America. Hollywood. 40 million? What in the hecking hell? It must be in Yuan, right? It has to be. It's in US dollars. Commando 2 has been crushed. Shashonti he have been stifled after we blocked his global release of the movie. That was purely the Chinese market's box office earnings. India. How did something like this happen? Commando 2 has lost. Wilson lost. Hollywood lost. What's more, they actually lost to a Chinese director and movie too. Motherhecker, what the hell is going on? 
Australia. This slap to the face is too ruthless. Wilson has probably gone out of his mind. This is a slap to the face of Hollywood by the Chinese. The Chinese are too terrifying. No, it's that Chinese celebrity who's the scary one. Japan went crazy. America went crazy. Europe went crazy. On the day, every person in the world went crazy. All of this had happened too suddenly and without any warning. At this moment, even the international entertainment news hadn't reported on it. The entire world did not have time to react, and the media wasn't even prepared. As such, everyone who saw the global box office rankings from yesterday was all shocked. There was a very strange atmosphere in the international scene. It was as though the people of the world had encountered a ghost. Only China was different. No one could fall asleep tonight. Every household was filled with surprise shouts and exclamations. In a home. Ugh. Honey, what's wrong? Hubby. Stop sleeping. Wake up and see this. What are you going on about so late at night? John Yi has won. He's won. Won? Against who? He has totally crushed Wilson. Ha ha, go wash up and sleep, you must be dreaming. Damn it, I'm serious. Look at this, quick. What? At a bar. Several Chinese movie directors were holding a late night meeting. Many of them had been woken up by calls to come here and were only just starting to find out about this big deal that happened in the film industry. Old Jew, old Jew, just how, we don't know either, but the box office statistics can't be wrong. How did Zhong Yi do it? No matter how he did it, this is still a milestone for China's film industry. Right, the reason why we called everyone out this time is to celebrate that. It's very possible that the Chinese film industry is headed for good times from here on out. That kid Zhong Yi is amazing. He's more than amazing. Yeah, he might as well soar to the heavens with his opening day box office earnings of 260 million yuan. This is the first time I've heard of anyone being able to step on a Hollywood movie like that. I'm still wondering if all of this is just a dream. Did that really happen? In a group chat. The Celebrity Goof Group. Many of the celebrities appeared in the group. Ning Lan sent a shocked emote in the chat, something big has happened. Xiaodong, at Zhong Yi you better come right out and send me a red packet. Damn. You're gonna be so popular. Teacher Zhong. You've shocked the entire world. Xu Han was stunned, at Zhong Yi so the word that you put out about challenging Hollywood, that was really hecking true. W we thought you were just joking. Yao Jinsai also emerged, I also thought it was just a joke. Chen Guang, old Yao, give out some red packets. Li Xiaoxian, old Yao, give out some red packets. Amy, teacher Yao, you're going to get real popular this time too. Yao Jinsai sent a sweating emote, what's this about getting popular? The box office earnings have shocked me silly. All I can feel right now is my pounding heart. I still haven't recovered from the shock. Amy, where's Director Zhong? Director Zhong? Why aren't you showing yourself? Dong Shanshan Shan appeared, I tried calling him earlier, but I wasn't able to get through. He must be getting a ton of calls. Ning Lan, I'm afraid to say, Zhong Yi must be the busiest person in the entire world right now. Today's battle has made him famous around the world. On Weibo. The news was spreading everywhere. Late into the night, there was ten times more activity on Weibo than in the morning. Zhong Xia. Hua Dongfang. Xu Mai Lan. Famous people in the industry. Several heavenly kings and queens. The moguls of the movie industry. Countless people were sending their congratulations. This was a grand affair for the Chinese film industry. It was a grand affair for China's entertainment circle as well. Every industry insider knew exactly what it meant for Wolf Warrior 2 to crush so many Hollywood movies to take the top spot. On the day's box office rankings, the Chinese netizens were in an even greater frenzy. Ah! How cool! This is so hecking cool! Number one on the global box office rankings for the day. Zhong Yi has really done it. When I saw the box office results, I actually cried. It hasn't been easy at all. 
It really has not been easy for our domestic movies. How many years has it been? I can't believe I got to see this day. Who says that the Chinese market isn't good enough? Ah? Who said it? That idiotic Wilson really looks like an idiot now. So you think that our Chinese market is negligible? How about now? Our domestic movies box office earnings in the domestic market are hecking greater than your gross global box office earnings. I'm so excited that I don't know what to say. It's too amazing. Zhong Yi has shown the might of our country. Wolf Warrior 2 is too heaven defying. Face smacking Zhong is indeed face smacking Zhong. I knew he could do it. I just knew it. Ha 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 ha. When Zhong Yi says that he will smack their faces, he will definitely smack their faces. Never has he failed before, that's the true mark of Zhong Yi. What a good day to celebrate. This is the most important day for our domestic movies. Letting face smacking Zhong step up to the international scene was the best choice we made. He can really lead the Chinese and our Chinese works to take on the world. Unlike those male idols who keep circling the domestic market for money grabs after they've reached the top, Zhong Yi takes on any challenge. And he always wins. I wasn't Zhong Yi's fan in the past, but I'm so excited today. After being woken up by my roommate in the middle of the night and seeing the global box office earnings, my blood is racing and I can't go back to sleep. I'm so proud for Wolf Warrior 2. I'm so proud for Zhong Yi. I'm so proud that I'm Chinese. Cheers. Excitement. Screams. Every person felt an exultant sense of pride. They all knew that Zhong Yi did not have any intentions to make a movie initially. But for himself, and for the sake of the Chinese people, he wore the hat of director and took the role himself, all just to prove in practice to Wilson, Hollywood, and the entire world, whoever offends the mighty nation of China. However. Distant. Shall. Be. Destroyed. Chapter 1647, Breaking Yet Another Record. The next day. Sunday morning. Zhong Yi had been taking calls until very late last night. When he opened his eyes again, his parents and parents-in-law were already at his house. From his bed upstairs, Zhong Yi could hear his mother's loud voice. He smiled and yawned, then stretched as he walked downstairs. Dad, Mom, he said. Wu Ziqing looked at him. Why didn't you sleep for a while longer? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I can't sleep anymore. His mother pulled at her son. Did you see the box office earnings? Did you see it? I knew about it earlier than you. How could I not have seen it? Zhong Yi laughed. His father said excitedly, those earnings are beyond belief. You've broken the record. Li Qingqin also said excitedly, Little Yi, you've caused quite a sensation this time. Wu Changhe had a tired and weary look on his face. Clearly, he also couldn't sleep well after finding out about the opening day box office earnings of Wolf Warrior 2. It was too high. It was too frightening. There had never been such a high opening day box office in the history of the Chinese film industry. Zhong Yi chuckled and said, Dad, Mom, it's only the first day, so we still need to see how we'll do in the next few days. The opening day box office is very important, but in the end, it's still the total box office earnings that count. I won't be able to stay around to entertain you all. I've got to head back to the studio to arrange for some publicity. I'll be busy this entire month and won't be home early most days, so I'll hand Cece over to you all. His mother said, don't worry, we are here. Li Qingqin urged, hurry up and go to work. Wu Ziqing smiled. Let's go, I'll drive you to the studio. What are you doing? Zhong Yi asked. Old Wu said, I've booked a theater for this morning and invited my colleagues to watch Wolf Warrior 2. Zhong Yi said happily, all right, let's leave together then. The news was overwhelming. A Chinese film's rampage. A great enemy rises up against Hollywood. The ultimate box office breakout of the Chinese film market. What incident took place yesterday? Commando 2 gets defeated by Wolf Warrior 2 in the Battle of the Premieres. The first time in history. A Hollywood movie has lost to a Chinese movie. The world may need to re-examine the Chinese market. 
How far can the breakout of the Chinese film industry go on for? Who's going to be the global box office champion of this weekend? Hollywood's industry insiders predict, Wolf Warrior 2's performance might only be a flash in the pan. The UK. America. France. Japan. Canada. The news outlet. It's in many countries all over the world were crazily reporting on this matter. Some countries even published the news in the most prominent headline spot on the front page. It was clear that the sudden emergence of this Chinese movie had truly shocked the world. It was a fact that the media and industry insiders from all over the world found this hard to accept. The news in China was even more ferocious. Xinhua News. Central TV. And even People's Daily. Many of the Chinese media outlets were giving their support to John Yi. At the studio. The atmosphere was a jubilant one. When Zhong Yi arrived, he immediately got surrounded by the staff. Ah. Director Zhong. We're the best. We're on fire. On fire. Have you seen the international news yet? From the night until now, a lot of the studio staff had not gotten any sleep. They were all immersed in this great joy and couldn't control themselves. Zhong Yi laughed and said, I've seen it already. How is it now? Everyone gave him a report about the situation. Ha Chichi said, in order to avoid our limelight, three directors have confirmed that their new movies will have their releases delayed. That's why our showtimes have increased. How much is the screening rate today? Zhong Yi asked. Ha Chichi said excitedly, it's already reached 45%. Zhongzhu said, nearly half of the movie theaters are showing our movie. Zhong Yi nodded. All right, are the real-time box office earnings for today out yet? Of course, the box office earnings can be tracked in real-time now. Little Wang held up her cell phone and said, I'll check for the latest updates again. Ah, as of right now, we've already hit 93 million in the box office earnings for today. And it isn't even noon yet. Ah. 93.5 million. It's gonna cross a 100 million very soon. Zhong Yi said, what about Commando 2? Tong Fu checked. Almost the same. They're already past $10 million in earnings. Zhong Yi suddenly said, just winning for a day isn't considered much. Everyone, don't slack off. The battle has only just begun. Don't screw up at this critical juncture. We'll need to keep up the momentum and continue following up with the promotions. Where's the graphic designer? Is the movie poster highlighting a total box office earnings of 300 million done up yet? When he got a positive response, he immediately said, OK, do it again, keep working on it. Make sure we have it out on time. Old Ha, go and inform the actors to take a few more events. Be it the news or variety shows, get them to help out with the promos as much as they can. In short, I want us to get first on this weekend's box office rankings no matter what. Sure. Got it, Director Jong. Understood. Everyone got down to business. In China. On Weibo. It broke 100 million today. Yeah, it's already surpassed that figure. Wolf Warrior 2 is breaking common sense. Can it become the box office champion this weekend? It's still quite difficult to say. Commando 2 is starting to catch up. Come on, face smacking Jong. Heck that Wilson up. Vanquish Hollywood. Lord Jong is almighty. It's all up to you now. America. Wilson's company. We will definitely be able to catch up by today. That's right, the opening day performance doesn't mean anything. The box office earnings depend on what happens after. The weekend box office champion will definitely be us. There's never been a foreign movie that has performed better than Hollywood at the weekend box office earnings. It won't be an exception this time either. Keep up with the marketing. Increase the publicity for all major markets. We must become the box office champion this weekend no matter how much money is required for the marketing. Wilson was getting anxious. The Commando 2 film crew was getting anxious. Hollywood was also getting anxious. On the web. Netizens from all over the world had pulled their chairs up to watch the battle. 
This is so intense. The box office rankings have me gripped. Wolf Warrior 2 vs Commando 2, who will win? This is a battle of honor. The quality of this Chinese movie is really scary. The outcome will be revealed very soon. Could history of cinema really get rewritten today? It won't, Hollywood's legend won't be destroyed so easily. Yeah, that is Hollywood we're talking about, it's the pinnacle of the film industry. On this day. The entire world was anxiously staring at the box office rankings. Everyone had a look of shock on their faces as they watched with trepidation. 10 million US dollars. 20 million US dollars. 30 million US dollars. The two movies were neck and neck. The media. The people. The industry insiders. China. America. Japan. There were only a few more minutes to go. Everyone was waiting for the final outcome. When the global weekend box office closed, when those numbers finally stopped moving. The entire world descended into an uproar. It blew up on the web, God. How did this happen? It won again? The Chinese won again? This, what is this? How could it be? Who said that Wolf Warrior 2 was just a flash in the pan? This is a Hollywood blockbuster. This is director Wilson we're talking about. This is the sequel to Commando. How could it not even beat a Chinese movie? This is such a hecking miracle. What the hell? Impressive, my Chinese bro. You're awesome. The Global Weekend, Saturday and Sunday, Box Office Rankings, Number 1, Wolf Warrior 2 Number 2, Commando 2 The Chinese movie had taken first place again. Wolf Warrior 2's Sunday box office earnings were 48.21 million US dollars, with the total weekend earnings at 88.2 million US dollars. Commando 2's Sunday box office earnings were 45. 8 million US dollars, with the total weekend earnings at 81.05 million US dollars. At this moment, Wilson's face was ashen. Many Hollywood directors and industry insiders could not accept this. They could accept losing to a fellow Hollywood movie, they could accept losing to a fellow Hollywood director, but they definitely couldn't accept losing to a foreign movie. Furthermore, it was even a movie made by the Chinese. To them, this was the greatest insult they could receive. It was as though they were dealt a slap to their faces that left a stinging pain. How the hell did the Chinese movie do it? Are you people on steroids or something? Chapter 1648, Did You Fly Here? Monday. In the morning. On the third day since the movie opened. The International Celebrity Rankings Index was refreshed. The index saw yet another astonishing change of the rankings. Zhang Yi advanced from the 59th place on the International Sea List rankings by seven places, and was now ranked 52nd after his international popularity grew tremendously. It had to be said that Zhang Yi's international popularity had not moved at all prior to this. Furthermore, this was the third day since Wolf Warrior 2 had premiered. In fact, even though Wolf Warrior 2 was given a global release, its showtimes overseas were as good as negligible, and it could be considered as having only released in China. Yet that was still enough to increase Zhang Yi's international popularity by a lot, so it could be seen just how great of a feat it was for a Chinese movie to defeat a Hollywood movie in the past weekend's global box office rankings. It had completely shocked everyone around the world. The whole world had their attention on this. The media outlets of many countries were reporting about it. Something about a world-class director. Something about an international action star. All kinds of titles were attached to Zhong Yi. At this moment, the attacks from Hollywood started. The final box office earnings are still not confirmed. World-class director? That'll depend on the gross box office earnings the movie gets. It has only been two days. I won't acknowledge that he's an international action star. It's clear as day that Zhong Yi's physical fitness is atrocious, so how can he be called an international action star? That's actually too professional a term to use for him. Actors who can be labeled as action stars are all very good at fighting. They have to do it for real and not just shoot a few action scenes to be called an action star. Neither would having a slightly better global box office performance earn them the title of being an international action star. 
Just look at John Yi. Does he even look like he's an actor who can fight? Don't mention fighting, just based on his physical fitness alone, I doubt he can even run a mile, heh. The barbs were all pointed at John Yi. The purpose of Hollywood's attack was obvious. It was to stifle the bluster of Wolf Warrior 2's performance to affect their box office earnings. Even now, they were still hopeful that Commando 2 would be able to beat Wolf Warrior 2, and that their own box office earnings would surpass their rivals by the end of the day. In China. Shanghai. Outside the airport, in a van. Zhong Yi and several actors were on the way to a promotional tour stop. For the next few days, the main members of the film crew would be traveling the entire country to promote their movie. This was also their way to express their sincerity and help push Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings to a new high. Hachichi said, why is there a traffic jam? Zhongs were said anxiously, there are news reports of major traffic jams happening all over Shanghai. This is bad. Sophia kept checking her watch. The tour starts at 9 a.m., but it's almost 8. What if we don't make it on time? Honk honk honk. Honk honk honk. There was the sound of honking all around, but the traffic wasn't moving at all. Zhong Yi couldn't sit around and wait anymore. This show is our first stop and is crucial to our box office earnings, so we must not be late for it. How many kilometers are we away from the theater? Yao Jinsai said, we're still more than 20 kilometers away. Ha Chichi checked the GPS, the entire way is congested. Boss Chien Jr. let out a curse, heck. If I knew it would have been like this, I would have asked my dad to buy a private helicopter. This traffic is delaying us. If we arrive late to our stop, those Hollywood bastards will surely seize the opportunity to attack us and claim that we don't respect the audience. The entire world is looking at us under a microscope. If there is even a small mishap, they will definitely exaggerate and blow it out of proportion. They waited another two minutes. The traffic was still not moving. John Yi looked out to the roadside. Where's the bike share one? The several people in the car were taken aback. What's a bike share? Oh right. That didn't exist in this world yet. Zhong Yi took a deep breath and did not say anything. Suddenly, under everyone's puzzled gazes, he took out everything from his pockets, his cell phone, his wallet, and his keys. Then, he undid the buttons on his suit and took it off. Then he reached out to open the car door and said without looking back, I'll head over first. The several of them were dumbfounded. You'll head over first? But there's a traffic jam. H how are you going there? At the next moment, they saw John Yi sprinting forward. The people in the car were all stunned. Sophia nearly fainted. Where are you running off to? Boss Chien Jr. exclaimed, the heck. It's more than 20 kilometers away. Yao Jinsai shouted, did you drink this morning? You won't be able to get there even if we gave you a day. Ha Chichi and the others nearly vomited blood. They wanted to stop him but couldn't, so they watched as Zhong Yi disappeared running through the traffic. Jack could not understand Mandarin and was still looking bewildered by what just happened. Where is the director going? Boss Chien Jr. facepalmed and said, he running to the theater. Jack was stupefied. What? On the way there. Countless people lowered their car windows. Oh my god. Everyone, look at who that is. It's Zhong Yi. It's really face smacking Zhong. What is he doing? Is he jogging? But this is the highway. At another section of the road. Ah. Zhong Yi? Damn, I just saw a celebrity. Ah, Zhong Yi is jumping off the bridge. Damn, he really leaped over and jumped down. What's he in such a rush for? On Weibo. A headline began to trend on Weibo. The Weibo headline was called, The Running Zhong Yi. The coordinates are in Shanghai. Zhong Yi is still running. Wow, I saw him too. He's run to where I am. Where's he heading? Isn't the first stop for the movie's promotional tour happening today? Oh yes, there are traffic jams everywhere in Shanghai today. See could he be hecking thinking of running to the theater? Huh? On this morning, Zhong Yi was all over Weibo. 
passing through the various sections of the highway, netizens took pictures of him and provided real-time updates on Weibo. At 9.30 a.m. The promotional tour stop event had begun half an hour ago. The traffic in Shanghai started easing up. Ha Chichi said to the driver, quick, drive, we need to hurry. Zhongs were asked, did you spot director Zhong? Sophia kept her eyes on the road as the car drove. No, I can't see him at all. Who knows which way he went. Yao Jinsai also had his face close to the car window as he looked for any signs of Zhong Yi. He couldn't have run off too far ahead in one and a half hours. I guess he must have been running blindly and took a wrong turn somewhere. Since he left his cell phone in the car, we can't reach him either. We've almost reached the destination, so he might as well have just stayed with us and been late by only 40 minutes. Sophia said, what will we do if the director is not there with us? Hachichi said, we still have to do it. We have to try to hold out for a bit. Ak sighed. I guess that's the only way. Jongs was said, when we get there, let's apologize first, ten minutes later. The car reached the entrance of the movie theater. The crew jumped out of the car and fast walked inside. Upon seeing one of the event staffers, Ha Chichi and the others hurriedly apologized, sorry, we were late due to traffic. The staffer said, it's fine. Go in quickly. Ha Chichi said, everyone must be getting impatient, right? It's our fault. Director Zhong also encountered some problems and will probably not be able to make it in time for the showing, so, the staffer said startled, Director Zhong? Zhong's was said, we're sorry about that. But the staffer said, Director Zhong arrived long ago. Everyone was stunned to hear that. What? The staffer pointed inside and said, Director Zhong has already arrived. In fact, he even got here at five minutes to nine. Sophia's legs nearly gave way. Yao Jinsai stared with wide eyes. Impossible. No one could believe it, and they rushed inside to have a look. In the end, they saw Zhong Yi in the theater, holding a microphone and laughing as he said confidently, if everyone likes this movie, then please show us some support. As for the slander from those people in Hollywood, just pretend that you didn't hear it. Consider it nonsense from those bastards. The media and audience laughed. At this moment, Zhong Yi spotted Ha Chichi and the others. He smiled and said, All right, the main crew and actors have arrived. I'll leave the rest of the questions for them. Sophia stared in shock. Boss Chien Jr. looked like he had seen a ghost. What the hell? You're here already? How did you manage to run here? Did you hecking fly here or something? On the same night, the news broke. Wolf Warrior 2's first tour stop is successfully held. Major traffic jams across Shanghai, Zhong Yi runs to the theater. What is professionalism? Zhong Yi really lives up to the people's expectations. Running a half marathon to get to a tour stop? Zhong Yi's crazy run in Shanghai tops the trending list of searches. Some of the nosier media outlets even used the times and geolocation information of the netizens' Weibo posts to write a detailed article and track the distance and time of Zhong Yi's run on the highway to the theater. If they hadn't counted it, it wouldn't have mattered. But now that they did, it gave the entire world something to be shocked about. For the entire journey, Zhong Yi had actually run 22 kilometers in total. How long is a half marathon? 13.1 miles. Converted to the metric system, that would be 21.1 kilometers. In other words, the distance that Zhong Yi ran was actually one kilometer longer than a half marathon. And the time that he took to run to the theater was a shocking 59 minutes and 18 seconds. Upon checking the results of this year's international half marathon races, everyone was shocked to discover that Zhong Yi had run the best time in the world this year. Even the professional mar marathon runners were not as fast as him. This conclusion was frightening. It was so frightening that the world was astonished. The web blew up. An American netizen, what? A Japanese netizen, that's too fast a time. A UK netizen, is that the best time this year? An Indian netizen, how is this possible? A Canadian netizen, this is the level of an elite athlete. A French netizen, didn't Hollywood claim that Zhong Yi's physical fitness was atrocious? 
that he wasn't qualified to be called an action star. H. How is that hecking called having atrocious physical fitness? Just how fit is he really? A Korean netizen, did you guys see the photos? His clothes and shoes. A collared shirt. And dress pants. Paired with leather shoes. He didn't wear any running apparel. Even like this, he was still able to run the best time of the year? People around the world didn't know how to react. Only the Chinese netizens were laughing. Did you guys just find out? This fellow isn't human to begin with. Teacher Jong has smacked Hollywood in the face again. Right after Hollywood speaks, face smacking Jong slaps them in the face. Jong Yi's physical fitness is atrocious. This is a joke that can make me laugh for a 100 hecking years. Chapter 1649, a first in the history of Chinese film. On the same day, the box office earnings were tabulated. Hollywood was silenced. The global film industry was silenced. Wolf Warrior 2's third day domestic box office earnings, CNUR 197 million. Meanwhile, Commando 2, which Hollywood had high hopes for, only scored a box office earnings of 81 million renminbi for the day after allowing for conversion. Previously, Commando 2 was still close behind Wolf Warrior 2 and could have surpassed it at any moment. However, it was finally showing signs of fatigue. On the web. This is too scary. The gap has been widened. Commando 2 has been affected by the Chinese movie. Zhong Yi's movie is too fearsome. It's dragged down the global box office earnings of Commando 2. Wilson has no way of catching up. Yeah, the outcome has been decided. These box office earnings are so scary. And it's even Monday. Very few movies can achieve such box office earnings during the work week. Do the Chinese not need to work? Hollywood has really lost this time. The only thing to look forward to now is how much Wolf Warrior 2's final box office earnings will be. There was something unique about the Chinese, they were busybodies. There was still another unique point about the Chinese, they loved being spectators when drama unfolded. Now that Zhong Yi and Wolf Warrior 2 had been deified by the masses, the enthusiasm of the Chinese for watching the movie was bursting through the roof. When people were out and having conversations with one another, there was almost a necessity to bring up the topic of Wolf Warrior 2. Such a phenomenal level of discussion had never happened before. In the span of a night, it was as though there was no differentiation between men and women, old and young, or even the rich and poor anymore. There were only two kinds of people now. Those who had watched Wolf Warrior 2 and those who hadn't. At a company. Come on, let's not work overtime today. Ah. Uh, the boss has booked a theater and invited everyone to watch Wolf Warrior 2. Wow. Long live the boss. This is great. In a neighborhood. Old man Lee, have you watched Wolf Warrior 2 yet? Not yet. Whoa, why are you so out of date? You haven't even watched it yet? You've watched it already? My son brought me to watch it. I thought it was especially good. Wow, then I should get my daughter to book a ticket for me too. In a school. Hurry, hurry, it's time to go. Have you bought the tickets already? I bought them long ago. Let's go and watch it together. Ha ha, let's go. I've already watched it three times. But I still want to watch it again. I've already watched it four times, but I still want to do my part to help Zhong Yi take on Hollywood. In the neighborhood where Tang Da Zhang, the crawstalk actor, lived. Tang Da Zhang was currently taking a stroll in the neighborhood. Yo, old Tang. Auntie Zhao, you're walking the dog. That's right. Ari, have you watched Wolf Warrior 2 yet? I don't watch Zhong Yi's movies. He, why didn't you watch it? It's really very good. I'm not gonna watch it. Go and watch. You aren't Chinese if you don't watch it. Tang Da Zhang nearly vomited blood. What do you mean by I'm not Chinese? Don't you all know that I'm at loggerheads with Zhong Yi? Why would I watch his movies? But in the end, Tang Da Zhang still went to watch it. He put on his sunglasses and a face mask and sneaked into the theater. He was just very curious about why Zhong Yi's movie was able to bring everyone together in China. 
What right did Zhong Yi have to challenge Hollywood? This was something that no one in the Chinese film industry had ever managed to succeed at in many years. At Song Chi Studio. In these past few days, the atmosphere in the studio had been changing by the day. In the beginning, everyone was waiting for Zhong Yi to make a fool of himself. Later on, they started hoping that Wolf Warrior 2 would fail at the box office. However, with how everything had developed to this point, they were powerless. They were all stunned by Zhong Yi's new movie. They've broken the record again. If only we had known, we wouldn't have asked for a raise back then. A movie that will enter the annals of history like this one, we would have acted in it even without pay. If only we had taken this role, Little Song would have had a lot more development potential. Song Chi was regretting his choice now. His agent was also extremely regretful. They had now become the butt of the joke of the Chinese film industry. Song Chi had posted an advertisement on his Weibo to promote his new movie today. However, countless people left a lot of comments replying to that post calling out Song Chi. It was revealed he had gone back on his word and backstabbed Wolf Warrior 2 during its production phase. Comments, get out of the entertainment circle. How can there be anyone as petty as you? Song Chi, go to hell. Because of you, Wolf Warrior 2 nearly didn't make it out of production. Changing your compensation terms at the last minute? Why don't you just die instead? Song Chi's reputation stunk up the entire street. One day. Two days. Three days. Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings continued to soar. The speed at which the box office earnings was rising was totally unprecedented. 800 million. 900 million. 1 billion. 1.1 billion. In only a short period of five days, Wolf Warrior 2's gross box office earnings had already surpassed 1.2 billion renminbi. At this point, it also completely broke the Chinese film industry's highest grossing box office earnings, and successfully took first place in the Chinese box office rankings. Moreover, this record would still be rewritten over the upcoming days. There were almost no signs of this coming to a stop. On this day. A celebratory feast was held. Zhong Yi booked a banquet hall and arrived early at the venue to make sure the arrangements and the place were set up properly. He even stood at the door to personally welcome the guests. An endless stream of friends walked in. Yao Jinsai was laughing out loud from afar. Ha ha, Zhong Er. Zhong Yi opened his arms and embraced him. You've worked hard, old Yao. I just went to a few more interviews. How is that hard work? Yao Jinsai said with a smile. Zhong Er, I'm here. Dong Shanshan appeared in a spectacular getup. Zhong Yi was wowed. Whoa, you're so beautiful today. Dong Shanshan smiled gleefully and said, Of course, the celebratory feast this time is held in honor of us winning against Hollywood, so I definitely had to dress up more presentably. Behind her, another few honored guests arrived. The richest man in China and his wife. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Boss Qian, we owe it to you for the movie's distribution this time. Qian Haitao grabbed hold of his hand and said, It was all down to your movie being good. Moreover, I should be the one saying thank you instead. You've really done our Chinese movies proud this time. Zhong Yi smiled. It's because everyone is supportive. Mrs. Qian added, Teacher Zhong, I'll be depending on you to watch out for my son in the future. He's still young and has been spoiled by us all this time. He hasn't achieved anything to be proud of, but after working with you on your movie, I've seen a great change in him. Moreover, he really respects you too, so please guide him well in the future. Zhong Yi hurriedly said. Mm, you're too generous. Boss Qian Jr. also walked up from behind. He had heard what they said and couldn't help but laugh and say, Mom, Teacher Zhong is even more vicious at scolding others than I am. He has also scolded more people than I did, so are you sure you want me to learn from him? Mrs. Qian slapped him upside the head. Oh, you. Jack and the other American actors were here as well. Jack smiled and said, Zhong, congratulations, you've become the number one director in China. Zhong Yi said happily, Oh, come one, there are a lot more directors who are better than me. As for you, have you seen the news lately? You're even more popular in China than a Hollywood A-lister is. 
Jack said emotionally, that's all due to you. Johnny ushered them in. Come in. Let's catch up over drinks later. Very quickly, the guests had all arrived. John Yi stood on the stage. He picked up the microphone and said, everyone is here now. There are no reporters today and no outsiders either. The only people who are present are the actors, crew, and distributor of Wolf Warrior 2. First, let me thank everyone here for their support, which has allowed Wolf Warrior 2 to achieve the results that it has. Today's celebratory feast isn't held for me but in honor of all of you. Let me raise a toast to every one of you. I also hope that our Chinese film industry will get better and for China to get stronger. Nice. Well said. Ha ha ha, cheers. Celebrations. Cheers. The atmosphere at the celebratory feast was extremely warm. Zhong Yi was on fire. Sophia was on fire. Yao Jintsai was on fire. Jack was on fire. The Chinese film industry was on fire. This was a celebration of the people. And an unprecedented celebration for Chinese movies. Chapter 1650, Wolf Warrior 2's Final Box Office Earnings. 2 billion. The box office box earnings grew higher and higher with each passing day. These days, Wolf Warrior 2 had dominated the global box office champion so much so that Hollywood could hardly breathe anymore. Everyone around the world could only see this Chinese movie putting on a one-man show, and no one could do anything about it. Challenge it. How would they mount the challenge? There was nothing they had on it at all. Logically speaking, the 10 days after the release of a movie was the best period for the box office earnings to grow. This was because those 10 days, which included two weekends, were often the most concentrated period where moviegoers would watch it during. After that, the box office earnings growth will slowly decline. This was a general rule of thumb in the film industry, and no matter how good a movie was, the box office earnings wouldn't be able to grow exponentially anymore. However, Wolf Warrior 2 broke this rule. Ten days had already passed, but the box office earnings of Wolf Warrior 2 still did not show any signs of weakening. It was as if the movie was on steroids, with the box office results continuing to soar by the day. With every new day, it created history over and over again. No one could see where the end for this movie was as Wolf Warrior 2 continued being unstoppable. America. Chinatown. There's finally a screening for the movie. We can watch Wolf Warrior 2 already. I've already watched it, it was really enjoyable. How blood boiling. Oh my awesome motherland. France. The cinema at the entrance is showing Wolf Warrior 2. What? Come, let's go and watch it. I was still considering to buy a ticket home to catch it. This is great. Supporting John Yi. Japan. At one of the Chinatowns. Wolf Warrior 2 is screening now. Even Hollywood is unable to hold down Wolf Warrior. Our Chinese movies are the best. Come on, let's go and get the tickets. We aren't Chinese if we don't watch it. Abroad. When the cinema chains in many of the countries saw this trend, they started increasing the screening schedule of Wolf Warrior 2. Some of them added a single session. Some added two sessions. Many of the countries were adding more sessions to their screening schedules. The movie was being shown in a lot of countries. Although the screening schedules overseas couldn't compare to the ones in China, although 90% the moviegoers who went to watch Wolf Warrior 2 were all international Chinese students, these small groups added up would still count for something. Furthermore, even if the significance of the overseas markets was different, it still helped to give a boost to Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings. America. Korea. England. Germany. Canada. Countless Chinese citizens were headed to the cinemas. All over the world, the cinemas were ignited by the Wolf Warrior fever. In China. A lot of people were also caught by surprise. Director Zhu Zhao's office. Director Zhu. Yes? It's time that our new movie, push it back another week. Ah? Delay it again? What else do you suggest then? Do you want to go up against Wolf Warrior 2 at a time like this? Damn, I understand. 
At Zhong Yi Studio. Ha Chichi said in surprise, it's already the 11th day now, why are the box office earnings still so high? The screening rate is already at 55%, but the attendance rate per session is still above 30%? Zhongs was said in shock, this doesn't make any sense at all. Tong Fu was staring wide-eyed. Are we headed for 2.5 billion? Little Wang exclaimed, what's 2.5 billion? We're targeting 3 billion. Zhong Yi smiled. We may be able to go even higher than that. Ha Chichi said dumbfoundedly, there's still a possibility of even higher than that. That's enough, let's go. Zhong Yi had already put on his shirt and packed up. I just received a publicity opportunity from Central TV. Old Ha, Little Wang, go together with me. Little Wang said, aren't you resting today? Ha Chichi also advised, yeah, take a rest for a day. No amount is enough if we're talking about the box office earnings, but I'm just afraid that your body can't take it anymore. Since we started production on the movie, it has already been two months since you've gotten any proper rest. Zhong Yi said, I don't care about that. When the movie is taken down, I'll have plenty of time to rest. Right now, we have to make the best of the box office earnings momentum. If we don't take advantage of that and do more promotions, when are we supposed to do it then? Let me tell you all this first. Actually, the box office performance right now is still far from what I was expecting. Wu Yi was taken aback. Ah? What? Tong Fu said, widening his eyes. Little Wang was stunned. This is still not within your expectations? Ha Chichi said with a sweat, it's already at 2 billion renminbi. Zhong Yi said, I've already said it before, we're going for a big one this time. We've only topped the overall Chinese box office rankings now. Since we're already at this position, shouldn't we at least try to aim above that? Above that? Where would that be? Could he mean the all-time global box office rankings? On Weibo. The netizens were constantly refreshing the box office earnings. It's at 2.1 billion already. This is too hecking scary. Charge. Go a little higher. Come on, let's go and watch it for the third time. Mother hecker, this bro has already watched it six times. I can even hecking recite all of the lines in Wolf Warrior 2 backwards now. Kneeling to the godly person who watched it six times. Foot, all of you are warriors. I'm not doing this for anything except to support our Chinese movie. Yeah, well said. We have never had a Chinese movie to be so proud of before. Let us give our support once more to John Yi. Agreed. Count me in. Send John Yi up onto the altar. Right, send face smacking Jong up onto the altar. It's at 2.2 billion already. It's at 2. 2 billion already. Brothers and sis, great showing. 2.3 billion. 2.5 billion. 2.9 billion. In the following days, Wolf Warrior 2 continued putting on its solo performance. The entire world was shocked at this. Back at home. His mother was stunned. It's at 3 billion already? His father was startled, it's really 3 billion. His mother said, this, this has surpassed the previous domestic box office earnings record by three times. His father said, little he has torn a hole in the sky this time. Several days later. At Ning Lan's house. Several female celebrities were having a gathering. Did you all see that? Yeah, saw it. Damn, it's almost hitting 3.5 billion. It's not almost, it has already surpassed 3.5 billion a minute ago. Several days later. At a director's gathering. It has reached 4 billion. There was an air of silence at the gathering. Old Jew, you haven't released your movie yet? Not yet. When are you going to start screening it? It's still to be confirmed. What about you? Me? I'll wait a while longer as well. Hi, there's no hecking way we can release any movies at a time like this. Another few days went by. At a media outlet. It has hit 4.3 billion. This is hecking crazy. Yeah, everyone in the country is going crazy. I'm going crazy too. 
Wolf Warrior 2's box office earnings have already started slowing. Yeah, it will be taken off from screening pretty soon as well. I wonder how much it will be at the end. On the last few days before the movie was to be taken off from screening. There was a commotion on the internet. It's almost there. It's at 4. 6 billion already. It's getting closer and closer to the top 100 of all-time box office earnings. There's really hope for that. Yeah, it's really just a step away now. Heavens, we might be about to witness a historical moment. Come on, John Yi. Come on, Wolf Warrior 2. It's all up to you all now. It's just a step away. On this day. Wolf Warrior 2 screening ended. There was no extension of the movie screening. The Wolf Warrior 2 box office performance in this world was different from that of Zhong Yi's previous world, and the exchange rate here was also different. Zhong Yi knew that there were many differences between the two worlds, so of course not everything could develop in the same way. Zhong Yi was already very satisfied with this box office performance. This was even a very big surprise to him, and to the whole of China too. Meanwhile, for America, for Hollywood, and for the rest of the world, this was simply a huge shock. The box office earnings were tabulated. Wolf Warrior 2's final box office earnings were, CN Yuan 4.8 billion won. Under the current exchange rates, the box office earnings brought in 738 million US dollars. On this day, all around the world, people were shocked to discover that a new movie had suddenly appeared on the all-time global box office rankings top 100. It was also the only non-Hollywood movie to ever make it onto the chart. It was called Wolf Warrior 2. Its global box office ranking was, number 96. Wolf Warrior 2 was deified. John Yi was deified. On this day. The world was shocked. Hollywood bore this name in mind. The entire world bore this name in mind. Chapter 1651, The International Celebrity Rankings Index. The next day. A day after the movie was taken out of theaters. On the web. 738 million US dollars. It's ranked 96th place on the global box office rankings of all time. This is truly heaven defying. The Chinese movie has created a miracle. It's the first time a foreign movie has defeated a Hollywood movie in history. The final box office earnings that Commando 2 took in was only 398 million US dollars. It didn't even cross 400 million. China finally has a world class movie director. That's right. He's the only Chinese director who can compete with Hollywood's might. It is hard to imagine, but you have to admit, China has really risen. For a Nobel Peace Prize, laureate to have a military movie that climbed into the all-time global box office rankings. Is it a joke or did it really happen? Shouldn't a Nobel Peace Prize laureate be committed to the cause of peace? Shouldn't they all be dedicated to philanthropy? Why is he completely different from all the others? Ever since he got onto the international celebrity rankings, he's been beating up people at award ceremonies, promoting military strategies on television, and filming military movies. Is this something that a Nobel Peace Prize recipient should be doing? Pfft, the people from the Nobel Prize Committee are probably regretting awarding him the Peace Prize. Zhong Yi? I'll remember him. I've remembered it as well. He's a weirdo. International showbiz is gonna get interesting. Netizens from all over the world commented one after another. Zhong Yi's international popularity blew up again. Many foreigners who did not know Zhong Yi before were now starting to learn of his name through this incident. Those who had heard of Zhong Yi in the past were now becoming more familiar with him through this topic as well. From the discussions of the foreign netizens, it was very obvious that everyone used to refer to him as, that Chinese guy, and hardly anyone could name him. But now, the foreigners were all typing out Zhong Yi's name every few lines, so this showed just how much his popularity had grown. Back at home. In the villa. After being busy for close to three months, Zhong Yi was finally able to get some rest. When he got home last night, he immediately laid down and fell sound asleep. He did not wake up until this morning. His back ached. His feet ached. His neck ached. He was aching everywhere. 
Old Wu asked, Are you up yet? Zhong Yi said, I want to sleep a little more. Ha ha, but aren't you already awake? I can't get up, I want to lie down for a while longer. I have to go and buy some groceries to make lunch. No, let me hug you for a while more. Cece said, Daddy, play with me. Zhong Yi said, Daddy can't move anymore. Zhong Yi closed his eyes and hugged his wife. He did not want to get up, nor did he allow old Wu out of the bed. He placed his hand over her stomach and put his leg over hers, mumbling shamelessly about not letting her get up. Old Wu smiled and massaged his head and neck. She knew that he must have been utterly exhausted during the past few months. The television was on. The news on it was all about Wolf Warrior 2. The last day of the box office earnings yesterday had allowed a Chinese movie to break the monopoly that Hollywood had on the global box office rankings. With this, they were finally able to make their name and voice known to people from all over the world. This incident had caught countless Chinese media outlets and industry insiders off guard, and the news started blowing up yesterday. On the television, this is the first time a Chinese movie has left an impression on the world. So let us remember this historic moment and remember the name Zhong Yi as well. Astonishment. Mania. Disbelief. There was jubilation everywhere. This was the atmosphere in China at the moment. Zhong Yi narrowed his eyes at the television screen. Turn it off. I'm getting tired of listening to that racket. Old Wu chuckled. But I haven't. Zhong Yi asked, have the international celebrity rankings been updated yet? Let me see. Old Wu browsed online and said, not yet. Zhong Yi said, how inefficient. He had been waiting for today's international celebrity rankings to be updated. To him, his work this time had been completed. He had given his country a huge gift, given the whole world a huge shock, and given Hollywood a slap to the face. He had achieved all that he wanted to do. All that was left were his personal affairs he was most concerned about, such as his international celebrity ranking, his achievements, the news about him, how many awards he could get, all of which were directly dependent on how much popularity he had. This was also an important indicator of his results. After putting in so much blood and sweat for close to three months, it had better not be for nothing. Noise suddenly came from downstairs. His parents and parents-in-law were here. Only then did Zhong Yi and Old Wu get up to go downstairs. Li Qingqin said with a smile, Little Yi, why didn't you sleep in for a while longer? You've become a national hero. Did you see the news yet? Zhong Yi smiled. Mom, tell me, in what way do I look like a hero? Li Qingqin scanned him from head to toe, then covered her mouth and laughed. She said, You totally look like one. Zhong Yi threw his hands in the air. I dare not be called a hero. I'll be thanking the heavens as long as no one scolds me. Who still dares to scold you now? His mother said in amusement, take a look for yourself online. Li Qingqin also said, no one in the country dares to criticize you anymore. It's fine if they compliment you, but if it's anything negative, they'll immediately attract a storm. Don't you know what happened a few days ago? Two celebrities who feuded with you in the past had pointed out flaws in Wolf Warrior 2 on Weibo. On the very same day, they were immediately taken to task by the entire country's netizens. As a result, both of them had to shut down their Weibo accounts and still haven't reopened them as of yet. Then there's also that male idol, Song Chi, the one who backstabbed the production. He has been collectively boycotted by the country's directors and is being scolded crazily by the netizens as well. Zhong Yi said nervously, surely not, right? No one is scolding me. Why do I not feel used to this? His father said, do you know your domestic popularity right now? Chen Chen showed the domestic celebrity rankings to your mom and me this morning. You're still in first place on the S list, but you've already surpassed that male idol who is in second place by almost double his popularity score. This was indeed the truth. In the past, everyone thought that after Zhong Yi rose to become the number one celebrity in China, his popularity would not increase by too much anymore. But no one could have expected that Zhong Yi, who had already ascended to the top of the entertainment circle, would still be able to increase his Chinese popularity score by so much. From another point of view, Wolf Warrior 2 had provided a really huge boost to Zhong Yi's popularity.
Furthermore, his domestic popularity would accumulate and be counted towards his ranking on the international celebrity rankings as well, back when he was still bordering on an appearance in the international celebrity rankings, and before winning the Nobel Prize, Zhang Yi had mainly gotten there as a result of his domestic popularity score. Zhang Yi smiled and said, it looks like I've made the right choice in shooting this movie. His mother beamed. More than that, this movie has catapulted you to fame. How much has our family earned this time? His father also asked in concern, have you counted it yet? Your parents-in-law and Ziqing still have their properties mortgaged, so you should quickly return the money to them. Zhang Yi smiled. I've already done the calculations. Everyone sat down on the sofa. Zhang Yi brought over a pen and paper, then happily scribbled on it. When it came to this matter, he was very excited. Everyone, take a look. The gross box office earnings figure is 4.83 billion yuan, with some of it coming from overseas. That part of the split will be a little complicated, so let's not talk about it for now. Domestically, we've earned around 4.8 billion from the Chinese market alone. After deducting taxes and related expenses, we will be splitting the sum with the various major movie theater chains so that they will take about 50% to 51%. After that is accounted for, the investors will end up receiving about 1.8 billion or so. Since it was our own family who wholly invested in the movie, there isn't a need to split the earnings with any other investors. All of the 1.8 billion belongs to us. Oh, there will also be some additional income later on. For example, Wolf Warrior 2 will be selling its internet streaming copyright and TV broadcast copyright as well. Based on the box office earnings we had, that won't be a small sum either. Furthermore, this future sum basically belongs to us, and there won't be a need to share it with anyone else. Therefore, I calculated the final sum to be this in the end. A figure was written on the piece of paper. When the family members saw it, they all shook in their boots. 2 billion ren minbi. His mother's jaw dropped. We'll be getting 2 billion in total? Zhang Yi chuckled and said, that's right, and I've already deducted the rest of the money as well. Wu Changhe, who had been silent all this time, was startled. Why is it so much? Because the box office earnings are high, Zhang Yi said with a smile. His mother yelled, we're rich. We're rich. His father sighed and said, why does this feel so unreal? Two billion? That's all ours? I've never seen so much money before in my entire life. Wu Chang her sighed. I've never seen it before either. Li Qingqin said in surprise, we invested 200 million, and we got back 2 billion. Zhang Yi smiled and said, I said it before I started the shoot. Since all of you were willing to invest the money in me, I'd return it by several times the amount. His father waved it off. Your mom and I only came up with a bit of money, so don't count our share of it. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, Dad, that won't do. Business is business. Zhang Yi said, that's right, you got to take your share. His mother was feeling generous for once. She waved it off and said, enough. Your dad and I don't have anywhere we can spend that much money on anyway, so keep it for yourself. Li Qingqin laughed and said, we don't want it either. When the money comes in, let's just pay back the mortgages. You two can keep the rest of the money. In the future, if you wish to shoot a movie or TV series, there won't be a need to go around raising money or be afraid that you can't get any investors again. Zhang Yi was getting anxious. That won't do. Wu Changhe said, just keep it with the both of you. After haggling for a long time, they still insisted on not accepting it. Finally, Wu Ziqing said, then let little Yi and me put the money aside for you. At this moment, the latest international celebrity rankings index was refreshed. Old Wu said, it's been updated. Li Qingqin asked, what ranking are you now? His mother asked, what's your rank? Ever since Wolf Warrior 2 was released, Zhang Yi's international popularity had been on a continuous rise. 59th place. 52nd place. 47th place. 45th place. He had gradually been moving higher on the international C-list rankings. But it was only today that the popularity that Zhang Yi had amassed was finally revealed. His position on the international celebrity rankings changed once again. 
the International Celebrity Rankings Index. International C-List Rankings, John Yee's Ranking, 29th place. He jumped a level from mid-tier C-lister to become a front-runner. He was getting closer to the B-list. Remember, just three months ago, Zhong Yi wasn't even on the international celebrity rankings yet. At that time, he still wasn't considered to be an international star. From not being in the rankings. To getting onto it. From being at the bottom of the rankings. And advancing to the middle of the rankings. To becoming a front-runner. All of that took only three months. He had rocketed to his current position. This momentum that he was progressing at was simply too shocking for the people of this world. On the web. It's out. The Celebrity Rankings Index has been refreshed. Heavens. Jack has advanced. Jack has risen to the middle of the international C-list rankings. He was previously just a lowly C-list celebrity. It must be due to the popularity that he gained from China with Wolf Warrior 2. Guys, look at Zhong Yi's ranking. He's at 29th place on the C-list rankings. This is too frightening. No one has progressed so quickly before. Yeah, the international superstars from back then like Farah, Robert, and Lillian, none of them progressed at such a speed before. How many months has it been? That Chinese celebrity has only been on the international celebrity rankings for three months, but he's already making a push for the international B-list rankings? This is too fast. What's wrong with this world? There has never been a Chinese celebrity who has reached such heights on the International Celebrity Rankings Index. With just one movie. Zhong Yi's path on the international scene has completely opened up. Chapter 1652, The First International Brand Endorsement Contract. Sunday. In the morning. Outside the window, the clouds were a cotton-like presence. It looks like quite a good day today. Daddy, I want to go out and play. Where would you like to go to play? I don't know. I want daddy and mommy to bring me out to play. All right then, but you'll have to let you mommy shower you first. I, I don't want to shower. Be good. If you clean up, daddy and mommy will bring you out to play. Oh, will sister Chen Chen be going too? Yes, we'll all be going together. MHM. Zhong Yi signaled to old Wu with his eyes. Wu Ziqing smiled slightly and took Cici to the shower. This little girl was good in every way and was usually very obedient as well. However, she would always start getting resistant at the mention of a shower as she did not really like it. This was why Zhong Yi and his wife always had to work together to cajole her into taking one. Two hours later. At a vacation destination in the suburbs. The family drove their car and went on an outing. Fishing. Swimming. Soaking in the hot springs. Cece was having heaps of fun and feeling spoiled. Zhong Yi laid down on the deck chair and commanded, Chen Chen, watch your sister closely. Don't let her bump into anything and keep her away from the riverbank. Make sure she doesn't fall into the ditch as well. Chen Chen was furious. Zhong Yi, why are you so lazy? Zhong Yi laughed and said, this bro hasn't had any rest at all during the two months of filming, so why can't you let me have some rest now? Chen Chen said angrily, you said over the phone that you were bringing me out to play. Zhong Yi, how the hell did I believe you? Sister Chen Chen. Cici pointed at the river and exclaimed, it's a big fish. A big fish. Chen Chen wanted to shirk her responsibility. Get your daddy to help reel it in. Cece grabbed Chen Chen's hands and playfully waved them around. I want Sister Chen Chen to catch it for me. Chen Chen rolled her eyes. I'm gonna end up becoming your little nanny soon. Although she said that, she still used the kid's fishing rod to reel in the fish earnestly. It's a big fish. Sister Chen Chen, hurry. Sister Chen Chen, quick. I know, I know, don't rush me. Ah, there's another one. Stand further back. Be careful of falling in. Quickly. Quickly. Ah, quickly catch it. Oh. You've caught the big fish. Mommy, come and see. Daddy, come and see. The big fish is so big. Hey, that's cool. 
the whole family was enjoying themselves and having a great time. When it came time for lunch, it was a feast of grilled fish. Wu Ziqing was smiling as she fanned the flames. She had taken the responsibility of grilling the fish. Off to the side, three mouths were waiting eagerly to eat them. Old Wu said, OK, I've got one that's ready, a non-spicy one. Cece called out, Mommy, give me, give me. All right, eat it slowly. It's hot. Old Wu handed it to her. A moment later, another piece was done. Chen Chen called out, It's mine. Mine. Zhong Yi tried to snatch it from her. Give it to me. Chen Chen said in annoyance, This one's mine. Zhong Yi said, You can have the next piece. The two of them nearly got into a fight over a piece of grilled fish. Finally, Wu Ziqing had to step in and say something. No fighting over the food. Let Chen Chen have this piece first. She stretched out her hand to block off her husband and personally handed the grilled fish to Chen Chen. Chen Chen gave Zhong Yi a look before gobbling up the fish. Zhong Yi harumphed. Wu Ziqing laughed and said, You're an international star. Why are you still fighting over food with a child? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. An international star still needs to eat, right? At this moment, Zhong Yi's cell phone rang. It was from the studio. Zhong Yi answered, Hello, Sister Ha. Ha Chichi immediately said, Director Zhong, something big has happened. Zhong Yi laughed and said, I'm most afraid of something big happening right now. Is it good news or bad news? It's good news. Ha Chichi said, We have been approached for an endorsement contract. Zhong Yi wasn't too interested in that. He said, Is it a brand endorsement? Which brand is it for? If it's any of those brand names that I had endorsed before, reject them. I won't do it no matter how much money they are willing to pay. When this bro was sent to jail back then, all of them kicked me while I was down and took legal action against me for breach of contract. In the end, we had to pay so much in compensation that my wife even had to dip into her savings and pay them off for me. We nearly went bankrupt as a result. I'll always remember them for that. Ha Chichi laughed and said, it's not a domestic brand name. Zhong Yi said, an overseas brand? Ha Chichi said, and you won't be able to guess which one it is for sure. Zhong Yi blinked and said, which one? Ha Chichi said something astonishing. The number one beverage brand in the world. Is it cola? Zhong Yi was taken aback. That's right. Ha Chichi said excitedly. Zhong Yi said happily, why would they come to me? Ha Chichi said, your international fame is on a completely different level from before. You're at the peak of your popularity right now, have you forgotten? The biggest sales market of cola is China, so I guess that's why they wanted you to be their brand ambassador. We've just been contacted by them, and this is an opportunity for us to increase our international presence and visibility. This is why we quickly got in touch with you to let you know. How much are they offering? Zhong Yi asked. Ha Chichi said. 10 million US dollars. How long is the contract for? One year. When does the contract negotiation start? Their representatives will arrive tomorrow. Okay, I got it. After hanging up, Zhong Yi was in a very good mood. Wu Ziqing said, I finished grilling another one, who wants it? Zhong Yi immediately scuttled forward. It's mine, it's mine. Oh, you. Wu Ziqing shook her head and laughed. Who was that call from? Zhong Yi ate while answering, it was from the studio. There's a global brand endorsement deal from the cola company in America. It's the leading international beverage. Chen Chen loved drinking cola the most. When she heard that, her eyes lit up. Zhong Yi, you're going to endorse cola? Zhong Yi said, what do you want? Chen Chen said, get me 10 boxes. Zhong Yi laughed and said, 10 boxes? Do you want to die from drinking all of that? There weren't many cola brands in this world. Coca-Cola? PepsiCo? Future Cola, 1, https colon double forward slash en dot wikipedia. Orga wiki a future underscore cola, all of those didn't exist. There was only the cola company. 
this brand was also the largest beverage brand in the world, with no other company coming close. Usually, a first, or second-tier international celebrity would be chosen to represent an international brand name like this, and the choice of the brand ambassador would be changed on an annual basis. Even for an international celebrity like Lillian, an endorsement deal from Cola was considered a huge contract. This was a slice of the pie many celebrities had their eyes on. And unexpectedly, just as the current endorsement deal for the Cola company was running out, the first person they approached turned out to be John Yi. This one movie did open up John Yi's international path. The negotiations. Signing the contract. Shooting the ads. Everything progressed very quickly. Several days later, the advertisements were out. A new batch of products was gradually pushed out onto the shelves all across the world. China. What? Why is Zhong Yi's picture on this cola? Wasn't it endorsed by Francis? Ah. They've changed the brand ambassador to Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi has taken an endorsement deal for a top international brand. America. There's new packaging for cola? Zhong Yi is endorsing it. This is such a big contract. Why did they get him to do it? He's become really popular. Korea. Holy shit. Look at this ad. Cola has changed its brand ambassador? Does he even have the qualifications? It looks like after Wolf Warrior 2, the entire world has changed its perception of the Chinese market. Chapter 1653, a television show that has yet to appear in this world. In the morning. After resting for a few days, Zhong Yi finally got back to work at the studio. Ha Chichi smiled and greeted, Good morning, Director Zhong. Zhongs were greeted, Good morning. Have you finished resting? Little Wang said, giggling. Zhong Yi chuckled and said, What rest? I've been accompanying my wife and child at home for the past few days. I was either cooking or going on outings with them. It was even more tiring than working. Little Ju burst out laughing. What a humble brag. I was taken by surprise. Little Wang rolled her eyes. Have you ever spared a thought for those lonely people in the office? You've got such a good daughter and a beautiful wife. How could you feel tired about that? Don't you know how to be content with what you have in life? Oh right, I forgot. You're face blind and don't know that your wife is pretty. Zhong Yi said in amusement, you're teasing me now, are you? Everyone laughed. Zhong Yi asked, how's the ad doing? They've started a global campaign. Ha Chichi said, the effects are quite good. Zhongs was smiled and said, I've spoken with the cola company, and they've mentioned that they're pretty satisfied with it and it's on the right track overall. Our international presence and fame are slowly building up too. Our position on the international celebrity rankings these few days has been very stable and we didn't increase or drop in ranking, as we maintain our grip on a frontrunner position. It might be quite difficult to go further up the rankings, but it won't be easy to drop down in the near future either. Ha Chichi said pleased, we've gained stable footing in the international scene. That'll do, not bad. Zhong Yi nodded approvingly. Ha Chichi asked, what are your plans? Zhong Yi questioned back, what do you guys think I should do? Ha Chichi waved her hands in response. We don't dare to give any more suggestions. When Hollywood invited you to shoot a movie, we persuaded you to do it. As a result, we nearly caused a huge mess that would have sent our international popularity plummeting. So it's better that you make your own decisions when it comes to work. We'll carry out the dirty work in whichever direction you point us in. She then laughed and said, history has already proven countless times that the projects you choose will always turn out fine. Zhong Yi laughed and said, come on, I haven't thought of anything yet either. Movies? Music? Novels? Games? What should he dabble in this time? He really had no ideas. The movie this time had indeed brought him a lot of gains, and things like fame and qualifications were earned through it as well. But strictly speaking, he also resorted to quite a few gimmicks to achieve those results. Wolf Warrior 2 had indeed entered the top 100 of the global box office rankings and shocked the entire world. But in reality, most of the box office earnings were achieved in China.
Meanwhile, the people in most other countries had almost not even watched this movie. Hence, the popularity that he received through the screening of this movie was always lacking a little something and had its own set of restrictions in turn. This was also the reason why Zhong Yi would find it hard to break past the international C-list rankings in the short term. Even if he were to make another movie like Wolf Warrior 2, or another two or three movies like it, his popularity wouldn't be able to go much higher. At most, he would be able to stay at the top of the international C-list rankings. C-list? B-list? There was a fundamental difference between these two rankings. Since this was the international stage, he would of course have to do something with an international appeal and influence. It couldn't be a show that only his own countrymen would like, but something that foreign citizens would take to as well. Only by crossing that line would Zhong Yi stand a chance of advancing towards his goal of reaching the international B-list rankings. Any other talk right now would just be for naught. Noon. The takeout was delivered. Director Zhong, it's time to eat. You're still pondering about it. MHM. While they were eating, Zhong Yi was still considering this matter. He asked, we didn't receive any invitations for any projects. Ha Chichi said with a wry smile, we really didn't. Zhong Yi wondered out loud, how is that possible? It's because your popularity right now is too high. Ha Chichi said helplessly, that's why everyone thinks that you're too expensive to work with and that they can't afford you. That is probably the reason. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Sure, it's my fault for being so popular. Zhongs was said, the main issue is you're way too popular. You're a director of a 5 billion yuan movie. Zhong Yi corrected, it's 4.8 billion. Ha Chichi laughed and said, don't mention 4.8 billion yuan. In China, even a director or actor who has had a part in an 800 million yuan production can easily call the shots in the entertainment circle. Just think, how many times have you exceeded their achievements by? But I guess we can wait for a bit longer. There will be no projects extending an invitation to us. The only thing we should be concerned about is whether it suits us or not. What we lack now is not work, but a good project. We have to first open up our path on the international market before we can go further. Zhong Yi nodded. I agree with that. Suddenly, his cell phone rang. It was a call from his old classmate, Yu Yi. Zhong Le. Ying Yi? What's up? Are you at the studio? Yeah. All right, I'll head over for a visit. Sure, come over. Ten minutes later, Yu Yi arrived. The moment she entered the office, she said in surprise, you're still eating takeout. Zhong Yi laughed as he ate, then what should I be eating? You're already worth over 2 billion yuan, so why are you still eating this? Yu Yi said in amusement, I would have thought that you'd be feasting on abalone and lobster every day. I wanted to come here to scrounge a meal off of you. Zhong Yi chuckled and said, the money is not in yet. I'm still as poor as I was right now. Ha Chichi gave up her seat. I finished eating. Take a seat here, teacher Yu. Yu Yi smiled and said, thanks, sister Ha. Zhong Yi looked up and asked, what made you come to my office to visit today? Sitting down, Yu Yi said, someone never visits unless they need something. So what is it? Zhong Yi blinked. Yu Yi looked at him. You've really done us Chinese people proud with your movie. In just a few months, you've built such a good reputation for our Chinese film industry. However, you're still a host based on your profession, and we both came through the television system. Surely you can't only be thinking of making movies now, can you? Shouldn't you also do your part and better the television industry of China as well? By making a TV show that can bring us up onto the international scene, right? Zhong Yi said nervously, do you think it's that easy? Yu Yi laughed and said, it's not easy, which is why I came to you. Forget it, I'm not that capable. Zhong Yi hurriedly waved it off. Yu Yi said, not giving up, what do you think of Central TV International? Zhong Yi said honestly, I don't think it's much. Yu Yi was horrified. We're the only international channel in China. How is that not something? Do you guys have the viewership ratings to back it up? Zhong Yi asked. Yu Yi said coldly, we have the coverage. 
Zhong Yi said, what do you mean by that? Are you thinking of doing an entertainment show on CTV International? Hasn't it always been showing only politics and military programs? Yu Yi said, we have to keep up with the times too. Zhong Yi said, it's not easy making a TV show these days. Yu Yi said, you mean there are still things that you can't do? Zhong Yi laughed and said, sister, I'm not a god. Do you think that making a show is that easy? And you even want it to be interesting to international viewers too. Do you know what kinds of shows foreigners like? Talk shows? Although I was the one who started that format, it spread overseas a long time ago. They already have their own talk shows that are quite popular with the viewers. Who still wants to watch ours? Or do you want to make a documentary? The international documentaries have higher production value than ours, and their investments are larger as well. Their hosts fly all over the world to film their footage, so how can we compete? Or do you want to make a survival show? They're so overdone by the other countries that we won't have the first move advantage, so it will be a surefire fail if we were to do them as well. This is why China does not have a share in the world when it comes to TV shows. If we wish to use our own TV shows to promote ourselves overseas, it's an almost impossible task. No one will watch any of them. It wasn't that he didn't want to make a television show to open up China's path overseas. This was something that he wished to do back then, but making television shows was different from making a movie. China's television shows had even less of a presence in the world than China's movies. After thinking for a very long time, there wasn't anything that Zhong Yi could bring to the table. As such, he said, just forget about it. Yu Yi was taken aback. Wait a minute. Zhong Yi asked, what? Yu Yi looked at him with a puzzled face. When you mentioned that talk shows and documentaries are very popular overseas, I know that. But did you mention something about survival shows just now? Yeah, Zhong Yi said matter-of-factly. But Yu Yi asked, what's that? Zhong Yi was startled. Haven't you watched a survival show before? Yu Yi scratched her head. No, I've never watched one before. Zhong Yi said, they have such shows overseas, and they're under the exploration genre, Yu Yi said, looking confused, I really don't know about them. What are you talking about? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Why are you such a hick? Then he turned and looked at Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others. Explain it to her. However, their reactions were the same as Yu Yi. Ha Chichi said, I don't think I've heard of it before either. Jong's was seemed like he was thinking hard. Are there shows like that? Little Wang said, exploration? Exploration of what? Digging for oil? Everyone was shaking their heads. No one had heard of it before. Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. Ah? There isn't such a thing? He quickly searched for it on his computer. Soon, a surprised expression appeared on Zhong Yi's face. He shouted, what the heck, it really doesn't hecking exist. Yu Yi said curiously, just what sort of strange show did you watch? Strange show? That show isn't strange at all. It was a phenomenal show that was extremely popular all around the world. Chapter 1654, I'll film it. On that night. Beijing. At a gym. A car parked outside. Zhong Yi and Wu Zuching stepped out with their daughter. Old Wu asked, what made you want to come to the gym all of a sudden? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I wanted to train a little and also wanted to have Cici learn how to swim since there are coaches here. I've already made the arrangements. There won't be any outsiders around. Old Wu asked, who's the owner? Zhong Yi said, Xu Mai Lan. It's not usually open to the public. Cici was a little conflicted. Daddy, I don't want to swim. Zhong Yi patted her on the head. Be good. When you learn how to swim, daddy will buy you something nice to eat. Wu Zuching smiled. She's been afraid of water since birth. Zhong Yi said, that's why I want her to learn. It's best to conquer your fears. Someone was already waiting for them at the entrance. That person came up and welcomed them. Teacher Zhong, you're here? My last name is Zhong. I'm a coach here. Sister Lan just called me and arranged everything. Please follow me. Zhong Yi said, 
Thank you. Coaching smiled and said, You're welcome. The gym wasn't big, but it was very luxurious. As it wasn't open to the public, there was hardly anyone around. Most of the people here were either employees or coaches. When they saw Zhong Yi, there was a noticeable commotion. Although Heavenly Queen Chu Mailan had opened the gym, and the people who came by were often celebrities and big shots they were used to seeing, they still reacted a little differently when they saw Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi was an international star. Cici went to learn to swim. Sitting where the equipment was, Zhong Yi and his wife watched through a glass panel. Zhong Yi suddenly said, My classmate came to look for me today. MHM? Zhong Yi said, CTV International approached me to make a show for them. Old Wu asked, Have you accepted it? I haven't given them my word yet. If it's going to be for the international audience, it won't be easy. Yeah, I know that. Do you a concept? I do have some ideas, but I'm not sure if they'll work. I still have to ponder over it for a bit. If I'm really going to make that show, I won't be able to stay at home for a period of time again. That's why I'm hesitating. I have to get my wife's permission since I just finished making a movie. What genre is it? Wilderness Survival. Wilderness Survival? Are there shows like that? It's precisely because there aren't any that I wanted to give it a try. Any danger involved? Ah, no. Do it if you think it will work. I'll take care of matters at home. All right, I'll think about it then. Wu Ziqing stretched her arms a little. Let's go and work out as well. Zhong Yi laughed and said, do your warm-ups first. Don't pull any muscles. Not far away. Several female trainers were arguing. I'll take them, I'll take them. Sister Chen, you've already clocked out. Can't I apply for overtime today? I'm the one who's supposed to work overtime today. Don't you all dare to fight with me over it. Aya, stop arguing already. Why don't we all handle this together? Coach Xing shook his head and said, Look at you all, arguing over something like this. I'll take Teacher Zhong. You all can go and guide Minister Wu. Two of the female trainers went over to help Wu Ziqing. However, their eyes turned to Zhong Yi every now and then. Coach Xing went over and said with a smile, Teacher Zhong, what kind of workout would you like to do? Zhong Yi shrugged. I'll be fine with any workout. But Coach Xing said sternly, you shouldn't be working out like that. You don't usually come to the gym and work out with the equipment, right? You'll need someone who can guide you. Otherwise, you won't be able to achieve the full effects of the workout. It will also be easy to injure yourself that way. From your physique, you're slightly on the thin side and don't have much strength and muscle, so you've got to do a full workout. Zhong Yi said, that won't be necessary. Coach Xing said, you really should. He raised his arms and flexed to show off his muscles. Look, all this is a result from years of training. I know that you're doing this for your movie roles, but it's still your muscles or strength in the end. It's not something that anyone would find too much of. Your physical fitness should be quite good, so let me think up a workout regimen for you. I'll also suggest a diet that you can incorporate protein powder into. If you can stick to this plan for the next three to five years, you can also have nice muscles and be strong like us. I can guarantee you that. Zhong Yi waved his hands and said, protein powder? Count me out. Nearby, a female trainer also said, you have to take it, or you won't be able to increase your strength. Coach Xing added, that's right. But Zhong Yi kept waving it off. He said with a laugh, forget it, I'm not really thinking of working out so hard anyway. Just put the focus on my wife and guide her well. You don't really have to worry about me. Everyone was helpless. Wu Ziqing had already started her workout. Zhong Yi found a random machine beside her and started working out on it noisily. The trainers were all shaking their heads. All right then, let us know if there's anything you need. Zhong Yi's mind was not on gym workouts at all. He had come out with old Wu today mainly to get her opinion on a matter. He had been filming Wolf Warrior 2 for two months and then being busy for another month for the screening of the movie. During these three months, Zhong Yi was hardly at home, so he was afraid that his wife would mind if he were to be away again for his work. 
Fortunately, Old Wu had always been fully supportive of him when it came to work. This made Zhong Yi feel very grateful about his situation. Should he make the show or not? Could it work? No matter how much Zhong Yi thought about it, he found it to be an enormous risk. Just as he had said to Yu Yi, it was almost impossible for a show from China to get accepted by the entire world's viewers. Be it the region, language, or culture, all of those factors would have already made this path an unwalkable one. But a wilderness survival show was different. This type of show was not limited by international boundaries of any type. It just needed one person and a film crew, and they'd be able to film the show in the wilderness anywhere in the world. Then the show would just have to be translated into English or another language, and everyone around the world could watch it. The method for survival would also be scientific, so it isn't limited by cultural differences either. In addition, Zhong Yi was an international star now, so he had a certain influence on the international scene. Therefore, it didn't really matter much whether the person who hosted the show was Chinese, English, or American. The most important thing was, this kind of show didn't exist in this world. An hour. Two hours. Wu Zixing checked her watch. It's about time, isn't it? All right, let's get going. Zhong Yi smiled and got off the equipment. Wu Zixing smiled and said to the trainer beside her, Thank you for your guidance. The female trainer smiled and said, When you come here next time, do look for me again. Old Wu said, All right. Another female coach said, It's just that teacher Zhong didn't really do much working out. Zhong Yi laughed. Didn't I just work out for two hours? The female trainer covered her mouth and laughed. That weight you were working out with, even us female trainers find it to be too light. We'd only lift that during our warm ups. Zhong Yi said in amusement, That's because you're all professionals. The female trainer pointed to the side. Coach Xing is the most professional one here. Look at him. Coach Xing was bench pressing some weights. A few trainers were standing around him. He's increasing the weight. It's already at 180 kilos. How impressive. That's twice his weight. When Coach Xing saw so many people watching him, he felt even more motivated. He probably didn't lift this much normally. Letting out a shout, he braced himself until his veins were showing. With great effort, he unracked the bar and pushed it upwards with his arms trembling mightily. Everyone cheered. Great. Nice. He lifted it. The trainers were all clapping. Zhong Yi and Wu Zixing did not pay much attention to that. They just smiled and prepared to go and fetch their daughter. But at this moment, just as they were walking past, a loud voice rang out. Hey yo. The bar in Coach Zheng's hand slipped. His left hand couldn't grip it, and he lost control momentarily as 180 kilograms of weight came crashing down towards him. Ah. Careful. Old Jing. Several of the female trainers paled. The male trainers rushed up, wanting to help, but none of them dared to even stretch out their hands out to catch the bar. It contained 180 kilograms. For such a load to fall downwards, they wouldn't be able to catch it unless all three of them caught it at the same time. However, none of them were prepared for this. Coach Xiong was so terrified his face turned green. At the very last moment, a hand suddenly appeared above Coach Xiong's head. Zhong Yi was happening to pass by when he turned his head and noticed the situation. With just a look, his reflexive response caused him to stretch one hand out and grab hold of the bar. He stopped it from falling. It was stopped just two centimeters above Coach Xiong's eyes. Zhong Yi asked, Are you okay? Coach Xiong was stunned. The trainers around were all dumbfounded. Coaching said, Ah, yes, I'm fine. Zhong Yi nodded before lifting the barbell up with one hand and placing it back onto the rack with a loud clang. Throughout all of this, he did not even blink at all. Don't push yourself too hard. Take it easy. Then he left together with his wife. The two of them chatted as they walked off. Old Wu asked, So how's your thinking coming along? Zhong Yi replied, Ha ha, I've already thought it through. What's your decision? I'll film it. That's good. If I miss this opportunity, there won't be another chance like it. 
I definitely have to seize it. It's just that there's some difficulty to it. I haven't even climbed a mountain or lived in the wilderness before. I'm just afraid that my fitness isn't good enough. Work out more then. I will. After picking up Cece, the family of three walked out of the gym. Leaving the coaches in the gym nearly vomiting blood at what just happened. Everyone looked at Zhong Yi as he left. Then they turned to look at that 180 kilogram barbell on the equipment rack. Beads of sweat formed on every one of their foreheads. They looked at Zhong Yi like they had seen a god. A female trainer gulped. 180 kilos? A male trainer grunted, MHM. Another female trainer said, H he caught it with one hand? Another male trainer said, he did. Everyone knew what this weight represented. They knew even better what it meant to be able to catch that with one hand. And it looked like he did not even put in any effort? What left them even more speechless was that before leaving, Zhong Yi actually said, I'm only afraid that my fitness isn't good enough, while speaking to his wife. Your fitness isn't good enough. Then how hecking good does it have to be before it can be deemed good enough? Silence. It was so silent that it was awkward. It was so awkward that they could feel their faces flushing. They thought about how they even suggested to Zhong Yi earlier to take protein powder to increase his strength. Protein powder? You couldn't hecking train to that level even if you took 50 kilograms of protein powder every day. Chapter 1655, Preparing to Shoot Man vs. Wild. The next day. In the morning. At Zhong Yi's studio. The moment Zhong Yi arrived at work, he clapped his hands and gathered everyone together. Everyone, drop your work for now. I have something to announce. Yesterday, CTV International invited us to make a show that is suitable for international audiences. I thought about it for a whole day and finally decided that this will be our next project. I won't be taking any new jobs for the next few months and I want everyone to make the development of this new show their top priority. Little Wang said in surprise, what? Tong Fu was taken aback. We're really going to do it. Zhong Yi smiled and said, really? Ha Chichi said curiously, didn't you say that you didn't want to do it? Yeah. Wu Yi said nervously, you said yourself that it wouldn't work. China's television shows had always been stuck in a difficult spot, especially in the three years that Zhong Yi was serving his sentence. The bustling activity was just an appearance, but be it variety shows or documentaries, or even television series, their potential had always been limited to China. None of them were able to make it out there. During these years, there was also a continuous stream of television workers who tried to bring China's shows onto the international stage. But the end results were always failures without exception. Gradually, no one attempted it anymore. But this time, Zhong Yi wanted to give it a try. Zhong Yi smiled gleefully. If it were any ordinary show, of course it wouldn't work. This show we're trying to make will be totally different. It's a genre the world has never seen before. It can even be described as unique. Believe me, if this show is produced according to my expectations, it wouldn't be too exaggerated to say that it will become popular all over the world. Whether or not a Chinese television show can make it outside of our own country will all depend on this. But I have to tell everyone this first, the show won't be easy to shoot. It's going to be extremely difficult, so I will also have very high expectations for our crew. This is an outdoor survival show that will be filmed in the wilderness. Although we also have a lot of experience filming documentaries, television series, and movies, even if we have trekked through the mountains and the countryside, this is still going to be something different. Therefore, for the film crew this time, I prefer women not to take part and stay behind in the office to work. Little Wang rolled her eyes. Director Zhong, you're discriminating against women this way. Zhong Yi said in amusement, believe me, you definitely do not want to follow along. It's possible that everyone will have to stay out in the wilderness for up to three or four days without any sort of logistic support. The accommodations and living conditions are not going to be too convenient for women, so you might as well not go. I'll plan around that by focusing on our male staff for the shoot. Ha Chichi asked, just what is the show going to be like? Little Wang also asked, yeah, is it really that good? Make it out of China? Become popular all over the world? 
They were completely unable to imagine what Zhong Yi described. Zhong Yi chuckled and thought that he might as well bring out the proposal he had worked on through the night to prepare. Everyone immediately lowered their heads to read it. Man vs. Wild? One page. Five pages. Ten pages. After looking through it, everyone in the studio had a look of shock on their faces. Before this, none of them understood exactly what Zhong Yi had meant when he talked about it being a survival show shot in the wilderness. It was even more difficult to understand what the format would be like and how it would be filmed. But after looking at the program proposal, they finally got a taste of what it would be like. Little Wang exclaimed, Oh my god. Hachichi said anxiously, No way. Th this is too dangerous. Zhongs were stared, aghast. You're risking your life like this. Wu Yi said in shock, if anything goes wrong, someone could die. Zhong Yi smacked his lips and said, die? I know the limits. The safety of the film crew is not a big problem since we won't have to follow along for every scene. Tong Fu said, but who's going to be responsible for your safety? This is even more dangerous than the time we were filming the lion scene in the African savannah. If something really happens, we won't even have enough time for the rescue. According to this program plan, it wouldn't be enough even if you had 10 lives. Who the heck wrote this lousy proposal? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. I wrote it. Tong Fu said, uh. Zhongs was said firmly, I object. Ha Chichi said, I object too. Almost everyone protested against it. But Zhong Yi said bluntly, objections overruled. We're going to do it. We'll prioritize the stronger guys to be the members of the film crew. Of course, it's all voluntary. Those who are afraid or can't endure hardships don't have to go. Same for those who are physically weak. Otherwise, they can't handle any unforeseen situations in the wild. After you've thought it through, register your interest with old Ha. I want to see the list for the film crew before getting off work today. Oh yes, I will also need a dedicated cameraman to stick with me throughout. This job is going to be very dangerous as well, but our studio staff won't be able to do it since they don't have the abilities. See if there's anyone out there who's suitable for this job and employ them for the production. I don't need someone who's very good at filming as this is not an art film. What's more important is that they are hardy and physically fit and have wilderness survival experience. Everyone kept looking at one another. Zhong Yi blinked and said, what are you all standing there for? Old Ha? Ha Chichi said helplessly, understood. Zhong Yi looked at Zhong Zhuo. Brother Zhuo? Zhong Zhuo threw his hands up and gave in. Whatever you say. They both understood that if director Zhong had decided on it, there would be no point in persuading him. Zhong Yi laughed. Come on, let's get moving. When we're done filming the show, you guys will understand why I'd rather take the risk and finish making the show. Just wait and see how this show will sweep the world off its feet. Whatever TV shows from America, the UK, or Japan, whatever talk shows, variety shows, and documentaries, they will all be vanquished. It's not going to be difficult at all. Everyone was speechless. They didn't know if director John was serious or just taking them for fools. Sweep the world? Broadcast all over the world? Was that possible? With just a survival show in the wilderness? Would anyone enjoy watching a show with a fool wandering around in the mountains? On the same day, the news of John Yi's cooperation with Central TV International spread. Although there weren't any specifics and details made known, many media outlets and citizens could already guess through the existence of this news. John Yi's new work was going to be revealed soon, and it was going to be an international television show too. This was really big news. Ever since Wolf Warrior 2, media outlets from all over the world were paying attention to John Yi's activities. To everyone's surprise, John Yi, who had just become famous worldwide as a movie director, was turning back to making television shows. On the web. Zhong Yi is not going to make movies anymore? You're a movie director. Why would you be making TV shows? There's a saying in China, if you don't have a diamond drill, don't be mending ceramics one, lol. What's there in China that's worthy enough to make into a TV show? Who knows? 
Do you guys have any memory of a Chinese TV show? Nope, never watched one before. Me neither, I've never heard of any. In the field of the global television industry, there has never been a share for China. China's shows don't have a shred of presence. The netizens of the various countries couldn't feel optimistic at all as all kinds of contemptuous voices rang out. In the end, they were slapped by the Chinese netizens. A Chinese netizen, previous posters, I wouldn't refute it if you said anything else. But since we're on this topic, I have to say something about it, ha ha. Perhaps you guys still don't know about this, but the talk shows that you love watching the most actually originated in China. The netizens of the various countries were surprised. What? Talk shows? It spread from China? How is that possible? Many of the foreigners could not believe it. Countless Chinese netizens laughed and said, go on and check it out. It's especially legendary. When the netizens of countries around the world heard this, they went to check if it was true. Only then did they realize that the talk show format really originated in China and that the earliest talk show first appeared there. Many of their foreign talk shows had imitated that show, and some even paid copyright fees to China to adopt the format. This discovery really shocked them. The foreign netizens, it was really from China. This is ridiculous. I'm finding out about this for the first time. There's such an impressive TV personality in China. So who was the first person to do a talk show? They were really curious. Immediately, the Chinese netizens gave them the answer, the first talk show in the world was made by Zhong Yi. The copyright money that you guys have been paying all these years were paid to him. Many of the foreigners couldn't help but yell, heck. Chapter 1656, Zhong Yi turns survival specialist in double time. The world still did not know Zhong Yi well enough. At least, they did not know him as well as they thought they did. To them, Zhong Yi was a Nobel Prize winner, an author, and a movie director. They might also know that he was the current number one hacker in the world. But other than that, they didn't really have a deeper understanding of him. After all, Zhong Yi's status in the international scene still hadn't reached the stage where the entire world was obsessed with his every move. As such, when they heard that Zhong Yi was actually thinking of moving into the field of television, the people of the various countries all found it laughable. They thought that Zhong Yi was a total amateur and layman. But on this day, after getting slapped in the face by the Chinese netizens, countless foreigners shockingly discovered many facts that they didn't know. He was the one who invented the talk show. Their country's television stations had actually been paying copyright fees to Zhong Yi all this while. Not only that, Zhong Yi also did many other things as well. Documentaries. Educational programs. Variety shows. Television series. Television actor. Program planning. Skit actor. Crawstalk comedian. Host. Television guest and coach. Even the world's largest program, the Spring Festival Gala, had been directed by him as well. As long as there was anything related to television, and as long as it could be shown on television, Zhong Yi had done them all. If they had to find the most professional and most legendary television personality in China, if they had to find the number one person in the television industry, then that person would definitely be Zhong Yi. There would be no other choice. At this moment, the entire world finally found out that Zhong Yi was the most professional television personality in China. So he didn't start off by writing novels, nor did he come through by making movies. Instead, he had majored in broadcasting in university. That was the field that he was most proficient at. The number one television personality in China. It would be his first time creating an international television show. Could a miracle be about to happen again? At this moment, no one knew. They would have to wait until the show was broadcast. In the morning. Back at home. Zhong Yi's parents came to pick up his daughter. Zhong Yi said with an embarrassed smile, Dad, Mom, I'll have to trouble you two again for a while. This bro will be getting busy again and won't have time for other things. His father said, it's fine. His mother gave him a stare and said, what's fine? You've only rested for how long after shooting the movie? Besides, why did you go back to making TV shows? How many years has it been since you've made a TV show? Zhong Yi laughed and said, that's why I'm doing it again. 
his father asked, everyone's discussing it on the internet. So what kind of show is it? Zhong Yi laughed. I'll be keeping it a secret for now. His mother said, is it an international show? That's right. Zhong Yi nodded. His mother said suspiciously, are you sure you can do it? You better not fall around and come up with something lousy. Zhong Yi laughed. If I can't do it, then no one else can. His mother said, when are you going to start filming it? Zhong Yi said, once Central TV has finished their arrangements. It should be soon. The equipment. The personnel. Travel visas. Funding. There was a lot of preparation work to handle. Zhong Yi had only needed to set up the film crew, and he was already pretty much done. The rest of the work that would be handled by Central TV International were tasks like chartering a plane, renting boats, coordinating for the entry of the crew to various countries, and so on. Zhong Yi couldn't handle all that, so he had to leave it to them. Zhong Yi had his own matters to deal with. During the preparation period, he urgently needed to fix any flaws with the show. The selling point of the show was not as simple as just having a few skills to survive in the wilderness. The relevant knowledge, the ways to survive, the methods to make camp, what could be eaten, what could not be eaten, how to build a boat, how to escape danger, etc., all of these were skills that Zhong Yi did not possess. If he were to shoot the show in his current state, it would definitely not work. Therefore, there was still a lot of preparation work that he needed to do. He had to transform from a layman who knew nothing into an all-around survival specialist with knowledge of everything. And so, his wife was currently helping him shop for books online. Old Wu asked, the wilderness camping manual, is this fine? Zhong Yi replied, yeah, buy it. Ten ways to identify time in the outdoors? Buy it. A detailed description of animal species? Buy it. Fire starting with the hand drill method? Buy them all. His mother was dumbfounded. Rascal, are you thinking of setting up a library? Zhong Yi smiled and said, that's not even a lot of books. His father said, will you be able to read them all? Of course, Zhong Yi said. During the day. The books were delivered. 100 books. 200 books. 300 books. The entire living room was almost filled to the brim with books. Some of the books covered outdoor experiences, some covered scientific knowledge, and some were introductions to flora and fauna. There were Chinese books and English ones as well. These books covered nearly all of the knowledge on how to survive in the wilderness around the world. There were even medical books that taught about how to give treatment for external injuries. For others, wanting to gain experience in a short period of time from books was not too practical a method. But doing this was not difficult for Zhong Yi. This was because he could use the Game Ring's memory search capsule to quickly assimilate this knowledge into his mind which would then become a part of him. As long as it was written in the books, as long as the information was available online, he could learn them all. If a 100 books weren't enough, he would read a 1000 books. If a 1000 books weren't enough, he would read 2000. In just a short duration, Zhong Yi had speedily absorbed the knowledge and gained experience. He learned so much that he even believed that no other survival specialist in the world knew more knowledge than him and neither would any specialists from his previous world. In his previous world, on many of such survival shows, most of the survival specialists only looked like they knew a lot. In actual fact, they had a professional team supporting them from behind. There were botanists, zoologists, and medical experts too. It was those people who supported and channeled their knowledge through the host from behind the cameras. But John Yi didn't need such a team. He could do it all by himself. Of course, the things that involve mobility and operational skills were too difficult to learn by just reading about them in books. After all, without actual practice, there would be no accumulation of experience. This was different from looking at a plant and being able to name it. Hence, Zhong Yi opened up the game ring with the idea of getting some items from it. The virtual screen popped up. His total reputation points was at a terrifying figure. He had not used it in such a long time, and he had accumulated a lot of reputation points. Naturally, Zhong Yi did not feel the pinch anymore. 
this was something that would directly affect his new show, which was a very important step in his plans to go international. As such, he definitely could not be stingy. He activated the Lucky Halo, Ultra, and picked Lottery Draw, 3. It was finally time to try his luck, so Zhong Yi held his breath in anticipation. He opened the golden treasure chests, large, one by one. Skydiving skill, times 56, knife skills, times 100, fruit of agility, times 33, diving skill, times 128, surgical technique, times 66 and so on. There was an assortment of items. In the space of a night, Zhong Yi had turned into a wilderness survival specialist like he was on steroids. He couldn't be more awesome than this. Chapter 1657, Chen Chen gets into a fight. In the morning. At Sister Lan's gym. Zhong Yi was here again today. His main purpose in coming to the gym was to lose some fat and bulk up. After the movie was done filming, he had begun to neglect his training. As his wife's cooking was so good, he would always have a huge appetite whenever he ate at home. His abs were almost gone, so he thought of working out to make his muscles larger and more defined again before the show started filming. There would surely be scenes in the show where he would not be wearing any clothes, so he was doing this to make sure that he would appear nicer on television and hopefully boost the ratings a little. Bench presses. Squats. Lat pulldowns. Cardio. After he was finished the whole set of exercises, he wasn't even sweating all that much. Coach Xing and the other trainers who were standing nearby were looking at him as though he was some kind of god. No one dared to give Zhong Yi any advice or offer him any guidance because they knew that he much fitter than they were. Even if all of them were to join forces, they would probably still not match up to Zhong Yi in terms of fitness. At this moment, Ha Chichi called. Zhong Yi answered, Sister Ha, have you found someone? Ha Chichi said, not yet, the requirements for the camera operator are set too high. The ones that I'd managed to find were already some of the more outstanding ones in China. Zhong Yi shook his head. Those few definitely won't do. If they don't have any experience surviving in the wilderness, or if they haven't attempted skydiving before, how could they handle being my dedicated videographer? How are we supposed to film the aerial scenes? What about when we get into a situation that requires me to rock climb? Even though I can take a camera with me and film myself, such angles would only work once or twice in an episode. Surely I can't be doing that throughout the show, right? This is why having a dedicated videographer is very important. He's going to be more important than anyone else in the film crew, so I have to find a professional no matter what. Keep looking. Go and ask around in the circle and see if there are good ones somewhere. Hachichi said, all right, I'll continue asking. Zhong Yi said, hurry, there isn't much time left. Ha Chichi said, understood. Central TV's preparations were more or less completed, while his own matters were mostly settled as well. It was only the issue of the dedicated videographer that was still up in the air, so he couldn't help but feel a little anxious. Suddenly, another phone call arrived. It was from his mother. Zhong Yi picked it up. Mom, I'm working out at the gym. What is it? His mother immediately said, Chen Chen got into a fight in school. Ah? Zhong Yi was dumbfounded. Who did she fight? His mother sounded very anxious. She beat up a male classmate. Her form teacher has called to ask for her guardian to head down to the school right now. The boy's father is at the school as well and refuses to drop the issue, so run on over. Zhong Yi said, All right, all right, don't worry. I'll go over right away. His mother said angrily, You few are always making me worry. Zhong Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry, she's the one who got into a fight. What does it have to do with me? Isn't it all because she learned it from you, his mother harumphed. After hanging up, Zhong Yi drove over to the middle school Chen Chen studied at. At a school. In a middle school class. It was extremely chaotic in the classroom that was packed full of people. A tan man who looked very strong stood there refusing to leave. He was so angry he was blue in the face. Get your parents here immediately. Immediately. Let me tell you, this isn't over. Chen Chen curled her lips. Ha ha. The form teacher hurriedly said, Meng Meng's dad, everything can be worked out. 
several nearby teachers were also trying to persuade him. That's right, everything can be worked out if we talk through it. Sun Kuang spat out, no, this will not be worked out through talking. How did they educate their child? Huh? Such a young child, and such a young girl at that, and they actually taught her martial arts. And it's even the highly lethal eight trigrams palm? How can her parents be so inconsiderate? I must teach them a lesson today. Chen Chen snorted and looked up at him. Her classmates and the other teachers looked at Chen Chen in confusion. Martial arts? Eight trigrams palm? How could a child like that possibly know martial arts? Actually, the incident in class today had given the students and teacher a bad scare. It wasn't such a big deal at the beginning, and Sun Xiaoming and Chen Chen were both classmates. During the break, Sun Xiaoming, who was a rather mischievous child, had pranked a female classmate. He stuffed a caterpillar into her pencil case and frightened the female classmate so badly she burst into tears. But Sun Xiaoming was still not done. He continued running around with the caterpillar and scaring the girls in the class to the point of crying. In the end, Chen Chen banged on a table and stood up, then gave Sun Xiaoming a beating right in front of their shocked classmates. When the teacher arrived, she was also dumbfounded by this scene. A petite girl chasing after a plump boy wanting to beat him up, can you even imagine a scene like that? Only then did they realize that this little girl who didn't mix well with the class was actually so fearsome. Sun Kuang roared, why aren't your parents here yet? His son, Sun Xiaoming, had a bruised face and tugged at his dad, whispering, Dad, forget it. We were just playing. Sun Kuang said furiously, You rascal, would your face be all bruised if it was just playing? Would it? And what's this? You're so big, yet you couldn't even beat a girl? You refused to learn the eight extremities fist when you were young, so look at what's happened now. You're getting stepped on. Chen Chen narrowed her eyes. You practice the eight extremities fist one? Sun Kuang sneered. Don't think that you can act all arrogant just because you have a grandmaster in your eight trigrams branch of martial arts. I just want to know what kind of people your parents are. The teachers all knew that something big was about to happen. After his child was beaten up, this parent was looking to get revenge on the other party's parents. Listening to what had been said, these two families were even trained in martial arts. If they were to start fighting, would someone end up dying? The form teacher said in panic, what do we do? The language teacher said, call the police. The math teacher wiped at her sweat. Something bad is gonna happen. Sun Kuang shouted, I'm gonna teach your parents a lesson today on how to be a person. At this moment, a young man wearing sunglasses appeared at the entrance of the classroom. He said, hey, who wants to teach me a lesson on how to be a person? The protagonist had arrived. Everyone lost their wits. It's Chun Chun's parent. You, go back first. Hold him back. A few teachers hurriedly tried to protect Chun Chun's parent, but they were still a step too late. Sun Kuang stared hard at him, and without saying anything further, threw a punch out. Watch my punch. In the end, the young man wearing sunglasses blocked the attack head on. His wrist lowered as he swiftly struck back with it. After a single move, the young man wearing sunglasses did not move his feet in the slightest. Instead, Sun Kuang had been thrown back three steps. The young man wearing sunglasses said in amusement, the eight extremities fist. Sun Kuang's eyes widened as he pointed at him in shock. Damn. It's the Taiji fist. You're, you're, he instantly knew who it was. Immediately, he thought of something else and nearly wanted to vomit out a mouthful of blood. He turned and stared at Chen Chen. Eight trigrams palm? Christ! Why you read the child from Raoi means family? Chen Chen chuckled, ha ha. Sun Xiaoming said in panic, Dad, are you okay? Sun Kuang felt like crying. He had never wanted to cry this badly before in his entire life. Zhong Yi! Roi Min. As a member of the Chinese martial arts world, and as someone with a rather high rank in the Eight Extremities Fist branch of martial arts, others might not know what those two names represented to the martial arts world, but how could he not know? One was a female hooligan who had dominated China's martial arts world for decades. 
the other was a hooligan who had single-handedly swept aside more than a dozen large sects. They were the ones who ran rampant in China's martial arts world, and anyone who saw them would want to stay as far away from them as possible. What the hell? How did I manage to provoke those two hooligans? The atmosphere got a little awkward. Zhong Yi asked, would you like to go on? Go on, your sister. Sun Kuang waved his hand and said, forget it, forget it. I've already thought it through. We should let the children handle their own matters. As parents, we shouldn't interfere with their affairs. Moreover, this is a school, a sacred place, so we should listen to teachers and not just do anything rash. The students jeered, boo. The teachers rolled their eyes. That wasn't what you said earlier. But even if they were fools, they could also tell that Meng Meng's parent was not a match for Chen Chen's parent. Zhang Yi walked over to Chen Chen. What happened? Chen Chen pointed at the little fatty. He used a caterpillar to scare others. Zhang Yi stared at her. That doesn't mean you can beat up others. You're getting bold, aren't you? Chen Chen said, it's not like I used my full strength. Zhang Yi said angrily, that still won't do. Chen Chen curled her lips. Okay, got it. When Sun Xiaoming heard that, he trembled a little. Sun Quan was also chiding his son. Don't bully girls in school again in the future. Do you hear me? Sun Xiaoming said submissively, I understand, Dad. The matter was finally resolved. Both parties shook hands and made peace. Seeing this, the teachers heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately for them, nothing major happened. However, the students in the class could no longer sit still. They immediately surrounded Chen Chen, talking back and forth excitedly. Chen Chen, you're so impressive. You're really fearsome. Even a boy can't beat you? How did you learn that? Chen Chen, teach me. Chen Chen, your dad is very impressive as well. Is he some sort of a martial arts expert? Ah. Uh, He's not your dad? But anyway, I feel that he looks a little like some superstar celebrity. In the teacher's office. John Yi and Sun Kuang were both called over. The form teacher lectured, earlier on in class, I didn't want to criticize the two of you in the presence of the students. As parents, you two were too incorrigible. Chen Chen's parent, why do you still have your sunglasses on? Can't you give a little respect to a teacher? Hi, I forgot. Zhang Yi took off his sunglasses. As a result, the form teacher was stunned by what she saw. She screamed, Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi said, I didn't discipline the child properly and caused trouble for you. The form teacher hurriedly said, it's not troublesome, not troublesome at all. The teachers next to her were also stunned. Then they exclaimed and came over to look. It's Zhang Yi. It's really him. Heavens! I've finally seen him in person. The teachers were all very surprised. The form teacher suddenly felt that her reaction didn't look so elegant, so she put on a straight face again on purpose. Of the two of you, one of you is an international superstar, while the other is a famous domestic cameraman. You're both persons of status, so please pay more attention to your children's education in the future. You can't slack off or spoil them, understand? Sun Kuang said, understood, teacher. Zhang Yi said, blame it on us, blame it on us. The form teacher nodded in satisfaction and took out two pieces of paper. Sign your names here and leave your contact numbers. If your children cause trouble again in the future, I'll look for you too. Zhang Yi signed his name and then handed the pen to Sun Kuang. Sun Kuang was also about to sign, but the ballpoint point happened to run out of ink. Teacher, do you have another pen? He watched the form teacher carefully stow away the piece of paper with Zhang Yi's signature and cell phone number on it. She put it into the drawer like it was a collector's item. When she heard Sun Quang's request for another pen, she waved it off. Oh, never mind, I don't need yours. Sun Quang was floored. What do you mean you don't need mine? Outside the school. The two of them were walking side by side. Sun Quang didn't continue making a big fuss. He gave a fist and palm salute. Master Zhong, sorry if I've offended you today. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Master Sun, please don't stand on ceremony. 
after all, friendship grows out of an exchange of blows. We were just doing it for our children. Sun Kuang felt the same way. Hi, the children these days are really too worrisome. All right then, let's meet again if there is a chance. I'll be off now. Master Sun, please wait. Zhong Yi held out a hand to stop him. Sun Kuang was startled. Master Zhong, is anything else the matter? Zhong Yi looked at him and asked, You're a cameraman? Sun Kuang smiled and said, That's right. Not that I wanna brag, but I'm quite well known in China. Many of my works have won gold medal awards in cinematography. I've also won prizes overseas too. Zhong Yi asked with interest, How are your martial arts skills? Sun Quan was slightly embarrassed. In front of Master Zhong, I definitely would not dare to claim that I'm very skilled. But ordinarily, not even three to five well built men could get near me. Zhong Yi blinked. Do you have any experience in wilderness survival? Yeah, I do. Sun Quan could not understand why he was being asked such questions. The subjects that I usually shoot are things to do with nature, plants, insects, sunrises, and sunsets. In order to capture a shot, I sometimes have to wait up to a day or two. Of course I can't stay at a hotel. I have to set up a tent and camp outside. Mountaineering has become a standard affair to me. I'm not bragging, but I've scaled Everest twice already. Zhong Yi said excitedly, do you know how to skydive? Sun Kuang said, yeah, I know that. Zhong Yi asked, how about diving? Sun Kuang said, for an underwater project that I did, I spent half a year to get a diving certification. Zhong Yi asked, how about rock climbing? Sun Kuang said, I might not be able to free solo, but I'm fine with ropes and protective gear. Zhong Yi got even more excited the more he listened. But Sun Kuang was extremely confused. Why are you asking all this? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I'm planning to make a show and need a dedicated videographer with me. I haven't been able to find anyone up to the task, so I wonder if Master Sun would be interested. Sun Kuang was surprised. You want to hire me? Zhong Yi nodded. Yes. Sun Kuang said, When does filming begin? Zhong Yi replied, Immediately. Chapter 1658 Shooting begins for Man vs. Wild. A few days later. Overseas somewhere. At a small public airport, Zhong Yi was on the phone with his family. The signal wasn't very strong and there was a lot of background noise. He had to speak as loudly as he could. Mom, I've arrived. Be careful. I know, but it won't be dangerous. Still, watch out for your safety. I understand. It's about time to start the shoot. I'm gonna hang up. There were a total of three groups of people on the scene. One group was made up of the locals. Another group was Zhong Yi's film crew. The last group was sent by Central TV, and they were responsible for communication and ground coordination. A person from Central TV ran over and said, Director Zhong, the plane is ready to take off at any time. An advance party comprised of your people has already gone ahead. I've just established contact with them, and everything is progressing smoothly. We'll leave the remainder of the filming and coordination to you now. If anything unexpected happens over the next few days, you all must send us a signal. The locals have repeatedly reminded us that it is very dangerous over there. It's considered an uninhabited zone, so be very, very careful. Zhong Yi smiled and said, I understand, thanks. The person from Central TV shook hands with him. All the best to you guys. Zhong Yi said, I'll count on your blessings. On the other side of him, the pilot stepped forward and handed them the parachutes. Zhong Yi and Sun Kuang were the only two on the film crew who needed to skydive this time. Sun Kuang took his parachute and went off. However, Zhong Yi did not move. Instead, he unfolded his parachute amid everyone's startled gazes. Sun Kuang was taken aback. What are you doing? The pilot said in English, What? Zhong Yi said, I'll pack it myself. He unfolded it. He spread it flat. He folded it properly. He executed the steps in a flowing motion. The pilot had a look of surprise on his face as he showed a smile and gave him a thumbs up. 
Sun Quan was also a little surprised. You're such a professional. Zhong Yi smiled. I feel at ease knowing that I packed it myself. Sun Quan could be considered someone who knew his stuff when it came to skydiving, although he wasn't exactly a professional skydiver. However, he had come across many such professionals before and knew that most experts would not usually allow others to pack their parachutes for them. Due to certain beliefs or safety concerns, they would only trust themselves with such a thing. They would only feel at ease if they folded and packed it themselves. There were not a lot of such people, but Sun Quan was clearly not one of them. That was why he a little impressed by Zhong Yi as he didn't expect him to actually know his stuff. Soon after, the plane took off and headed straight to the filming location. In fact, they had already started the shoot while on the plane. Sun Kuang secured his recording equipment. Zhong Yi started recording his narration. Sun Kuang occasionally glanced down. It's so beautiful. Zhong Yi smiled and said, stick close to me in a bit. There will be time to enjoy the views in the coming days. Sun Kuang confidently said, don't worry, wherever you're going, I'm going too. I guarantee you I won't miss a shot. We're almost there. Get ready. Zhong Yi took out an action camera one. Sun Kuang said, Do you need me to put that on for you? Zhong Yi waved him off and affixed it very quickly. Sun Kuang shrugged and put on his equipment as well. The two of them repeatedly checked their respective gear to ensure everything was in order. The staff on the light aircraft were giving them instructions in English. It's very dangerous to do low altitude jumps. We'll find an open site where you can land. There are crocodiles and other ferocious beasts in these lands, and all kinds of different dangers as well, so are you sure you all want to head there to film the show? I suggest that you say your prayers. I hope that we can still see you when we come back to get you. He didn't know what kind of show they were going to shoot. All he knew was that this group of Chinese people might just be crazy. Zhong Yi laughed and said, we'll make it back. The pilot shouted, this place will do. Sun Kuang started getting nervous. Zhong Yi took a breath. Let's go. The cabin's hatch opened, and a strong gust of wind blew in. Speaking of which, this was Zhong Yi's first time skydiving. Although he had grasped the technique of skydiving, this feeling was still very strange. When this fellow leaped out of the plane, his adrenaline surged as he started free-falling. Wow. Zhong Yi had a smile on his face as he yelled. The blue sky. The white clouds. The jungles. The mountains. It was such an exhilarating feeling. At this moment, Zhong Yi finally entered the wilderness. He pulled the ripcord and successfully deployed the parachute, slowing his descent speed. Above him, Sun Quang also deployed his parachute. He controlled the steering and chased after Zhong Yi from behind while keeping the camera pointed at him. Sun Quang roared, this is so fun. Below them was open ground, the best spot to land. They were even able to see the campsite the advance party of the film crew had set up. On the ground. Many of the crew members were waving. Tong Fu shouted, Director Zhong. Wu Yi shouted, we're over here. Zhongs were laughed, ha ha, they've arrived. Sun Quan was also calling out to them from above. Everyone was laughing and the atmosphere was incomparably wonderful. Actually, before they came here, everyone was still feeling a little worried. They knew how dangerous it was in a primitive uninhabited land like this, so they were all very nervous. But when they arrived, they realized how beautiful this place was. Having lived in the city for so many years, they had not experienced something like this before. It was a kind of release and exaltation for their souls. For a moment, everyone even rejoiced that director Zhong had come up with such a show. Wasn't this as good as disguised tourism? Ha ha. But very quickly, that thought completely disappeared. This was because at this moment, Zhong Yi suddenly had an idea. Isn't this going too smoothly? A successful parachute jump? A safe landing? There was absolutely no sense of survival urgency that way. If one really ran into danger and was forced to parachute out into the unknown wilderness, it wouldn't be in the carefree situation that they were in now. It just wouldn't match up with the objective point of view of the show. Thus, 
he took a look around the area before suddenly twisting his body and shifting his weight to maneuver away from the open ground below him. He leisurely flew in the direction of the jungle a short distance away. This sight stunned everyone. Jongs were called out, it's not that way. Tong Fu yelled, heck. That's not it. You're going the wrong way. Wu Yi shouted, Director Zhong, where the hell are you going off to? Sun Quan was also scared out of his wits. Your sister. One of the greatest dangers of low altitude jumps is the flatness of the landing site, which is a very important factor. If the ground environment was too complex, if there were swamps, if there were seas, if there were jungles, all of those could threaten the safety of the parachutist, leading to injuries or even death. They were originally supposed to land out in the open, which would be extremely easy to pull off. All they needed to do was close their eyes and they would land without any problems. The only issue was that Zhong Yi had to get a brain fart at this moment when he decided to drift towards the jungle that was further in the distance. Sun Quang didn't dare follow him. Instead, he hurriedly prepared for landing. When the studio staff saw director Zhong drifting towards the jungle, they started panicking. After Sun Quang landed, everyone immediately gathered and headed toward the location Zhong Yi had drifted off to. Director Zhong. Where are you? Ayo. Half an hour later. They finally found Zhong Yi hanging in mid-air. His parachute had been caught in a tree, and his body dangled more than 10 meters in the air. Tong Fu was so scared that he was trembling. Hurry up and rescue him. Zhongs were called out, come down, Director Zhong. But Zhong Yi was very calm. Why would I go down? Hurry up and start capturing this on camera. Sun Quang turned on the camera in a speechless manner. This is ridiculous. Then Zhong Yi muttered some words and started narrating the situation that he was in. After that, he took out a dagger with much difficulty and start saving himself. If he really fell from a height of over 10 meters, even if he didn't die, he would still be crippled. So the people standing below him could not be more terrified of watching him at this moment. A few minutes passed. Zhong Yi jumped down from the tree looking pathetic. Tong Fu said, your stunts are too dangerous. Wu Yi said, why did you have to purposely get yourself into trouble? There was flat ground for you to land, but you had to choose to land in the jungle. I really have to take my hat off to you. Zhong Yi looked at them. Didn't you guys go through the script? Sun Quang was taken aback. What script? Our show's objective is to teach others how to overcome difficulties, Zhong Yi explained. Sun Quang said dumbfoundedly, what if there aren't any dangers? Zhong Yi said, then we have to create danger. Oh my god. You mean making something out of nothing, right? Zhong Yi knew that they had never watched a similar show before, nor did they understand the value of this show, so he explained it to them. The significance of this show lies in teaching others how to survive in the wild. Over the coming days, I will show everyone the different ways of survival and also tell the audience what they should do when they get into danger in the wilderness. So we can't have everything go smoothly for us either. Whatever danger that other people go through or experience when they are trapped in the wilderness, I'll also have to experience it once myself. It's not as though a person who is truly in danger can make a phone call and someone will be dispatched to come and rescue them. They couldn't choose where they could land after parachuting out or find hardtack the moment they flip their bags open. That's not realistic. So from now on for the recording, I will enter a state of true wilderness survival. I want all of you to just treat me as someone who is trapped in this place and not try to help me. Sun Quang gasped. You're going to die. At this moment, they finally understood how dangerous of a show they were going to shoot. The terrain was dangerous. The environment was dangerous. The wild animals were dangerous. The director was even more dangerous. Chapter 1659, Man V. Food. In the jungle. An hour. Two hours. Zhong Yi had already been hiking for three hours. His pants had been torn by the bushes, and his face was covered with dirt. There was no food or water, and his lips were so dry that they were cracked. His energy level was rapidly decreasing. This was not a state he could achieve through makeup but an absolute effect from the reality of survival in the wild. 
The camera was recording. Zhong Yi said tiredly, when you lose your way in the wild, the first thing you need to do is to locate a river. That means you'll have a source of water and even food. I've been walking for several hours, but I still don't know how far I am from a water source. I might have to continue walking for another day? Or two days? I don't know. All I know is that I'm hungry, very hungry. My energy levels have depleted rapidly and I can't take it anymore. I need to find some food to replenish my strength. Otherwise, I might really end up unable to get out of this jungle. His breathing then became much heavier. A while later, he squatted down around a patch of grass. The film crew also stopped. Then they saw Zhong Yi pull out a plant from the ground. It looked just like a bunch of grass, and there was nothing special about it. It looks like I have no other choice left. Although not many people would eat it, I am convinced that this is edible. Sun Kuang widened his eyes. Tong Fu's jaw dropped. Everyone looked at him dumbfoundedly. They watched Zhong Yi look a little unsure before stuffing the wild vegetation into his mouth. He chewed on it and began to frown. It doesn't taste bad, but it tastes a little like grass. Nonsense. That is hecking grass. You really dare to eat anything, don't you? Sun Kuang said anxiously, that had better not be poisonous. Zhong Yi smiled. Don't worry, it isn't. Everyone continued on their way forward. The wild vegetation was clearly not enough to fill Zhong Yi's stomach. His physical fitness was much better than everyone else's, and he had good stamina too. But because of that, his energy consumption was also much greater than most people. At this moment, Zhong Yi's stomach was rumbling with hunger. Along the way, his eyes glinted whenever he saw anything that looked edible. As he walked, he kept eating. Strange wild vegetation. Strange shrubs. And even strange tree bark. Zhong Yi tried all of them at least once. This one's not bad. This tastes a little strange. Everyone looked at him speechlessly. Suddenly, Zhong Yi looked up a tree. Wait. There's a bird's nest. From this angle, I can't really see what species of bird it is. But it shouldn't be a bird of prey. I also don't know if there are any bird's eggs in it. He stood underneath the tree and observed for a long time. It's at a height of around 15 meters, and the tree trunk looks a little thin. I do not suggest climbing this sort of tree because it will be very difficult to support my entire weight. However, I'm feeling too hungry right now. I need to give it a try. The film crew said anxiously, Ayo. Please be careful. You can't possibly climb that, right? Everyone looked skeptical. But in the next moment, Zhong Yi climbed right up the tree. With a grab and hooking his legs around the tree trunk, he began climbing while saying, this kind of tree has a very thin trunk, so one has to pay close attention to their balance. It has to be done very slowly to keep movement to a minimal extent. Ayo, that was a little dangerous. The trunk is starting to sway a little. Let it steady first, there's no hurry. 5 meters. 10 meters. He finally climbed up the tree. Zhong Yi laughed. Ha ha, how fortunate. I spotted two eggs, but they're not big. It's about the same size as a quail's egg, but it should be enough for me to replenish my protein intake. Saying that, he reached out to grab the eggs and held them lightly in one hand. Then he prepared to descend. But when he slid down a few meters, due to his one-handed manipulation, he lost his balance, and the tree titled to one side. Sun Kuang exclaimed, careful. Tong Fu paled. He's falling down. Wu Yi said, damn. Zhong Yi fell off the tree with a loud thud. The moment hit the ground, he landed on his feet and rolled on the ground to relieve the impact. However, he still let out a loud, pained cry in the end. He picked himself up with some difficulty and opened his hand to have a look. Luckily for me, the eggs are fine. Everyone ran up to him. How are you? Did you get hurt? Zhong Yi stood up with a smile. I'm fine. Everyone heaved a sigh of relief. Zhong Yi said into the camera, I still haven't found a water source yet, so I don't think I'll have a chance to cook the eggs. 
there's only one way left. The next second, under the shocked gaze of the film crew, he tilted his back head and opened his mouth wide. Then he crushed one of the eggshells with one hand and swallowed the egg in it. Oh, there's quite a stench, but it still tastes quite good. Maybe it's because I'm too hungry. Not bad, another one. He also downed the second egg. Wu Yi said, you ate that for real. Tong Fu was a little disgusted. Can that be eaten raw? Zhong Yi smiled and said, all eggs can be eaten raw. Sun Quang was impressed. You're good. Zhong Yi said, come on, let's go and see what's up ahead. They walked for another hour. The film crew was exhausted, so they set up camp. Zhong Yi brought Sun Quang along to explore the surroundings. Suddenly, Zhong Yi shouted, Old Sun. Don't move. Sun Quang blinked in confusion. What's wrong? When the film crew came over after hearing the commotion, they were all quite shocked. At this time, Sun Quang noticed a snake at his feet. His face turned green. Heck! Seeing that he was about to run off, Zhong Yi shouted again, Don't move. Sun Quang said in panic, What kind of hecking snake is this? A rattlesnake. Zhong Yi said, It's highly venomous. A venomous snake. And it was even a rattlesnake. Everyone was feeling really scared. But Zhong Yi was very calm. In fact, he even looked excited. This is a snake's nest. I can already see three snakes, and there should still be more hiding within the grass. Old son, don't move. I'll take care of it for you. Lowering his head to look around, he slowly crouched down and picked up a tree branch that was on the ground. He walked up and quickly caught the rattlesnake with it. The tip of the tree branch was Y-shaped and it pressed the rattlesnake down in place. Sun Quang quickly ran away. Tong Fu said, run, Director Zhong. Wu Yi said, hurry up and get back over here. Teacher Sun is fine now. However, Zhong Yi did not move. Instead, he bent over and picked up the rattlesnake by its tail. Bang, bang, bang. He killed it by smashing it several times against the ground. Then, he heard the familiar sound of rattling coming from within the grass. When around five or six rattlesnakes suddenly rushed towards him, Zhong Yi finally turned around and made a run for it. Let's go. Ah. Run. When they returned to the campsite. Everyone was sweating. It was too dangerous, so dangerous that they might just have lost their lives. Everyone was chattering among themselves to comfort each other. Suddenly, they remembered Zhong Yi and looked around to find him. A. Eh? Director Zhong? When they finally spotted Zhong Yi, everyone felt like vomiting blood. This guy was trying to make fire by drilling wood together. He actually wanted to eat snake meat. Sun Quang broke down. Why you still want to eat that? Tong Fu exclaimed, that's a poisonous snake. Wu Yi said, I'm fainting. This glutton. He didn't care about his life at all when there was something to eat. Zhong Yi spent more than half an hour before he finally got the fire started. Then he began handling and preparing the snake. He cut off its head and dug out its internal organs before placing it over the fire to roast it. His actions were all fluid and experienced. When the snake meat was done roasting, the aroma spread in all directions. Even the film crew had their appetites whetted. Zhong Yi tore off a piece of snake meat and sniffed. Then he ate it. Woo, it smells so good. This is really the most delicious thing I've eaten today. Compared to the grass and eggs I had, this is what real food should be like. Sun Quang rolled his eyes. Go on and eat. You'd die from it sooner or later. Man vs. Wild? This is obviously closer to man v. food. At this moment, a member of the film crew discovered a paw print and immediately called out to everyone in a fluster, Director Zhong. Everyone, come and see this. What kind of paw print is it? It's so big? What animal does it belong to? I don't know. They couldn't identify it. When Sun Quang saw it, his face immediately changed. Zhong Yi narrowed his eyes and looked down. He reached out to feel the paw print, it's a bear. This mark should have been left here less than two hours ago. The film crew was dumbfounded. 
A bear? There are bears here? And it was just here a while ago? Sun Kuang said nervously, we can't stay in this spot. Tong Fu said, hurry, let's go. On this mountain range, the bears were near the top of the food chain. However, Zhong Yi's next words scared them out of their wits. Zhong Yi muttered to himself, aren't bear paws quite tasty? Sun Kuang pulled him back. Damn. You're still thinking about eating bear paws? Director Zhong, calm down. Tong Fu called out. Wu Yi hurriedly grabbed onto him. You mustn't eat that. Little Liu said, what are you trying to do? Zhong Yi laughed dryly, ha ha, I was just joking. You glutton. You really don't hecking care about your life. Everyone nearly broke down. On the way here, Zhong Yi seemed to have hecking eaten everything that he came across, like grass, tree bark, bird eggs, and snake meat. Although Zhong Yi said that he was only joking, no one knew whether that was true. This guy's brain circuits had always been wired differently from that of a normal person's, so they were afraid that Zhong Yi would start hungering for bear meat so much that he would send them to their deaths together with him. This was the wilderness, an area uninhabited by people. If they really encountered a bear here, they didn't know if Director Zhong would really end up having bear meat or not. But one thing they knew was that the bunch of them would definitely get eaten by the bear first. Chapter 1660, The Bear Appears. It was getting late at night. The temperature in the jungle plummeted. Zhong Yi was lying in his temporary shelter made from branches and leaves. He wore a windbreaker jacket and huddled with himself. Holding the camera in his hand, he scrubbed through the footage that had been recorded today. Sometimes, he would fast forward it, and sometimes he would pause it. With that, he was already forming an idea of which footage could be used and which had to be discarded. Although he was exhausted and did not even get a sip of water, he was still quite happy with how things had turned out. This was because they had managed to achieve many of the scenes he had wanted to shoot. The only pity was that they still lacked some terrifying and exciting scenes. There still wasn't enough tension. It was time to rest. The rest could be thought out tomorrow. After turning off the camera, Zhong Yi took out a photo of his wife and daughter and kissed them before putting it away carefully and slowly falling asleep. An hour. Two hours. Three hours. After some time. Zhong Yi jolted awake. Roar. His muscles tensed, and he immediately turned on the camera. He flipped over and looked outside while whispering to the camera, it's the dead of night right now. I don't know exactly what time it is, but I can hear some sounds out there, and it's giving me a bad feeling. There, it's happening again. Did you hear that? It sounds like a wild beast, but I'm not sure what it is. This is terrible feeling, and I can't help but think of the bear prints during the day. Although I try to stay as far away from the area as possible when I set up shelter, I know that bears have a very keen sense of smell. If it has really set its eyes on me, it's definitely not good news for me. The film crew was still asleep. John Yi whispered, Old son. Old son. A tent in the distance moved. What is it? John Yi said, Listen. The other side went silent for a moment before someone exclaimed, Holy shit. Is that a bear? John Yi said, I'm not sure. What should we do? Sun Quan was flustered. John Yi said, I think we should leave. The film crew was called up. As they listened to the sounds made by the beast in the distance and heard the approaching rustles, they were all terrified. Zhong Yi asked, where's the tranquilizer gun? Wu Yi took a deep breath. It's here. Zhong Yi said, everyone, be careful. Get ready to leave. Old Sun and I will go take a look first. Sun Kuang said, what do you still want to look for? Run. Zhong Yi said, with so many of us, our group is just too big. We have too much equipment, so our movement speed will be slowed down for sure. It's also nighttime, and in uncertain circumstances, do you think you can outrun a bear? Hence, Zhong Yi and Sun Kuang turned on their cameras and went over. 100 meters. 200 meters. Suddenly, a dark figure flashed by in the distance. Sun Kuang said in shock, did you see that? Zhong Yi took a deep breath. I saw it. Sun Kuang said, it's a bear. 
then the dark figure vanished. The roars of the wild beast suddenly approached. Zhong Yi shouted, run. Sun Quang did not even think about it. He flew after Zhong Yi and ran away. Zhong Yi said, don't run towards the campsite. Head in the other direction. The film crew has a tranquilizer gun, so they won't be in danger. Sun Quang said, then what about the safety of the two of us? Zhong Yi said, that depends on how fast you can run. Sun Quang said, heck. As they ran, Zhong Yi was still holding up his camera and aiming it behind him. Sun Quang was astounded. He wondered how Zhong Yi could still have the presence of mind to shoot the scene at a time like this. As he ran, he asked, Master Zhong, give me some reassurance. If the bear corners us, can you defeat it? Zhong Yi asked back, can you? Sun Quang was in tears. Like I could hecking do that. Don't mention me, even my master would be kneeling if he were here. Zhong Yi said, then I can't beat it either. Sun Quang was somewhat skeptical. For people who practice Chinese martial arts like Sun Quang, be it the internal or external styles, it wouldn't be a problem to use them against most ordinary people, nor would it be ineffective when dealing with some small-time gangsters. But when faced with a wild animal, and in such rough terrain, there was basically no way to even make a move. The moment they encountered one would mean the end for them. But Sun Quang knew that experts like Zhong Yi and Rao I mean were different from the rest of them. No one knew how powerful their concealed power was. They ran for five kilometers. Sun Quang was panting. Has it caught up to us? Zhong Yi did not look too good. It's still behind us. Sun Quang said, Mother Hecker. It's got its eyes on us. Zhong Yi said, Listen, there's water around here. Sun Quang said, A river? It was almost dawn, and visibility in the jungle was starting to get a little clearer. In the distance, they could see that the path ahead had been cut off, and there was a cliff beyond it. The splashing of the water was coming from nearby, below the cliff. Behind them, the beast growled. They couldn't see the figure of the bear, but Zhong Yi and Sun Quang both knew that it had been following closely all this while. Sun Quang said anxiously, it's a dead end. How about we run along the cliff? Zhong Yi stood on the cliff and looked down. I have an idea on how to shake the bear off our trail. Sun Quang said, what is that? Zhong Yi picked up the camera and said into it, it's a dead end up ahead. The bear is coming. It's my only option to shake it off my trail. He lowered the camera and aimed it down at the river that had a rather slow current. The height was over 20 meters. Sun Quang had a bad premonition. What are you doing? Sun Quang shouted. Zhong Yi shouted, jump. Saying that, Zhong Yi leaped off the cliff. Sun Quang had such a fright that he cursed. Then he heard a roar come from behind him and couldn't help bursting into tears. He clenched his teeth and stomped his feet before jumping down as well, all while scolding, Zhong Yi. Heck your sister. Sooner or later, you'll be the death of me. Plop. Plop. As both of them were martial arts experts, they landed in the water with their bodies rigidly straight. Zhong Yi poked his head out of the water first. Old Sun. Over here. Pfft. Sun Quang spat out a few mouthfuls of water. Zhong Yi belly laughed. Let's get ashore. When the two of them finally swam ashore, they were so exhausted they were gasping for air. Zhong Yi started lapping up over a dozen mouthfuls of water from the shore. Phew, I'm alive again. The thirst was killing me. Sun Quang said angrily, you're alive, but I was nearly scared to death by you. Zhong Yi laughed and said, let's contact the film crew and get everyone to gather. Two hours later. The film crew hurried over in panic. Tong Fu was going crazy with anxiety. Where's director Zhong? Where's director Zhong? Wu Yi cried out, are you two all right? Is anyone hurt? Little Liu looked around. Where's director Zhong? What happened? Sun Quang pursed his lips, then nudged his chin in the direction of the river. Everyone's gaze followed in that direction, and they nearly face-planted into the ground. A bonfire had been set up by the river, and several fish had already been cooked. What the hell? You are way too efficient. 
You can still think of eating at this time like this. Can't you stop eating for a minute? After Zhong Yi finished filming with his camera, he turned around and said to everyone, the fish have been cooked. Those who want some, please register your names first. There's a limited quantity, so it's first come, first served. Looking at his appearance, it didn't seem like he took last night's life or death situation seriously. His mental fortitude was clearly on a whole other level. Sun Kuang asked, does your director usually not care about his life when he shoots a show or movie? When this point was raised, Tong Fu was filled with bitterness. That's right, he's usually like this. We've been scared to death countless times by director Zhong over the years. Hi, let's not talk about this anymore. It will just make me want to cry. I think I'll take a bite of that fish to calm myself down. Then he quickly ran over and said, leave one for me, director Zhong. The others also shuffled off to eat. Sun Kuang did not go over as he was still angry at Zhong Yi. He snorted as he took two bites of the hardtack that he had before he quickly got sick of eating it. Looking at the grilled fish they were eating, he stubbornly picked up two sticks of wood and tried to make a fire. In the end, he couldn't even manage to get the fire started. Sun Kuang was extremely embarrassed. Throwing away the wooden sticks in his hands, he shamelessly went over and ate the roasted fish that they were having. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.